595 calling for an inquiry in aid of legislation on the alleged human trafficking and cyber fraud operations in Clark, authored by Senator Grace Poe, and Senate Resolution Number 611, calling for an investigation on human trafficking inside the Clark Freeport Zone by Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Pagpapatuloy din po ito ng uh, nasimulang mga hearing na bunsod ng aking privileged speech tungkol sa nailikas na ating mga kababayan mula sa scam hubs sa Myanmar at Cambodia. Kahapon po, bilang paghahanda sa ating hearing, ako po'y bumisita sa Clarkson Valley, ang site ng ni-raid ng ating magigiting na kapulisan noong May 5, 2023, para siya sa atin at tignan ang itsura ng mga scam hubs na ito. I think this is the first time that the public will be able to see the inner workings of a scam hub. At sa totoo lang po, kahit ilang buwan ko na ito sinisiyasan, yeah. nagimbal pa din ako sa aking nakita. Oh, umaga po. Hello, maganda umaga po. Hi ma'am. Umaga po. Umaga po. Sa unang tingin, mukhang mga call center lang ang mga opisinang ito. However, a closer scrutiny will reveal the nefarious schemes that are perpetrated here. Sa mga desk na pinapakita sa videos na ito, nagtatrabaho ang mga traffic nationals mula sa Vietnam, China, Indonesia, Thailand, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Bhutan, Morocco, Nepal, at iba pa. At ang ginagawa nila araw-araw ay magpaibig ng mga foreigner, kadalasan mga lalaki. At matapos nito, ay pilitin silang mag-invest sa cryptocurrency. Panoorin po natin ito. This is like uh, there is water bottle. If ah. water bottle given by company, and this is for a uh, phone for a uh, work phone, uh -huh. and this is for keyboard. So okay. if we put our keyboard outside this this box, uh -huh. we get the job salary also. Why? Yeah, because they already give like so they make us like a military mm. like military something like that. So everything must discipline or something like mm -hmm. that. So. This oh, is, what's that gong? It's this, in Vietnamese. Yeah. What's written on so, it? Uh, this is for the person who make a customer deposit or something. Like, so we hit the drum like wow. to, to acknowledge them, like, to, to what? acknowledge them yeah. uh, that we make sales, something like wow. that. Wow, it's like opening the stock exchange. Yes. <laughs> wow. So when somebody hits the gong, how much money does that represent that uh, he or she was able to get? Uh, different every time. So it's around range $100 to $1,000. $1, $1, Hmm. Okay. Magugulat kayo sa susunod kong ipapakita. Kung humingi ng video call ang mga target nila, mayroon po sila ng mga models at tatawagan nila ang target mula sa mga video room. Papakita ko po sa inyo ang mga video room na ito. Thank <laughs> you. 
So what's in your script? What do you have to say or talk about? You just have to say hello at the first video call, yeah. just to say hello. So this is like the office. Mm, very nice. uh, hmm. The story Actually, it's depends on the, the profile that the exactly. manager creates for you. Exactly. If they told them I'm in my room, that, that would be the video room when uh -huh. the, yeah, the place looks like a oh, room. Oh, so this oh. is a room. Yes. Ah, no wonder there are all those like wallpaper oh. to really make it look like a bedroom. Yeah. Mm, okay. Actually, they find um, fake pictures that looks exactly like you. Wow. Yeah. Ngayon, pag sila'y hindi makahanap ng customer o mayroon silang infractions, sila po ay maaring dalhin sa dark room kung saan sila ay ikukulong ng tatlong araw na isang cup noodles lang ang pagkain buong araw at walang kama o upuan. Pag gusto daw mag-resign, ikukulong muna sa dark room na ito para mawala sa ulirat at magbago ang isip. Ang tawag nga daw ng boss nila sa silid na ito ay meditation room. Dahil dito daw sila mag-isip-isip. Yun nga lang nakatakip ang bintana, walang kama o upuan at hindi sapat ang pagkain. Panoorin po natin ito. So this is the dark room. So who, who are put in here? Oh, you? Yes. So what did you experience here? So uh, we just sleep, yeah, only sleep, uh, eat, they give uh, one cup of noodle every day wow. and small water of bottle for a per day. Mm -hmm. But there is no light, so uh, from the in front, they, they like use a blackboard, something like that, so yeah. there is no light. It's but like torture, uh, light deprivation. Yes, no there is bed. No, no bed. bed. Really. You just sleep on the yeah. floor? Yes. Wow, all alone, just you? So it must have been hot in the daytime and cold at night. Yes. What month was this that you were put in the dark room? Uh, last year, around August, August or September, I forget the date. September months, and September getting cold already. Who want to live here right. like, like three days without, without, uh, without take shower, right. without, even the toilet is so smelly that time. Yeah. So, Oh, like Did the shower actually work? Could you really take a no. bath? No. People want to resign. Of course, they put us here. So that they call it meditation room. Meditation? Yes. So so they will say, now you still want to work or you or you want to go back. If we say want to go back, I think they will still keep us here until we, we change our mind. So sabi niyo po sa akin, isn't this a human rights violation? Kung gaano kapayak ang dark room, wala man lang kama o upuan, ganun naman kagarbo ang opisina ng CEO ng kumpanya. Napasok din po namin ang opisina ng ito at gusto kong makita po ninyo ito. The bosses. And when you say bosses, these are Chinese bosses? Chinese, Chinese. Chinese bosses. Lahat po ng mga boss na offices, may ah. kanya-kanyang vault. Wow. So, here, may dalawang, dalawang vault. Yeah. Wala na po yung vault dito. Opo, kasi kinuha. Ibidensya uh, na po namin yung vault. So lahat Good. po nang na-open na vault, okay. isinala na namin sa kapkanya. Okay. So during binuksan office, na. Yes, ma we have may laman. During the implementation of the oh. vault. Meron okay. po yung mga witnesses oh. from AMLAC and oh, okay. Barangay Officials and CDC while opening oh, the vault. Okay. Pero okay. one of the vault in the third floor, one of the offices in the third floor, there okay. are two vaults. Okay. A total of 97 point something million pesos. Pesos. Doon lang sa dalawang vault? Yes. So may dalawa pa rito? Uh -huh. may... A total of 42 vaults. 42 vaults? Yes, sa lahat po nang na-raid? Yes. Two yes. wow. offices. Office 1 and Office 2. Oh. Ano pong estimate nyo sa total cash na nakuha sa lahat One, ng vaults na may cash? 187M. So yung kalahati nandito? Yes ma'am, yung biggest one here, 97 million on the third floor. Yes. Okay. Wow. The PNP ACG was able to seize hundreds of millions of pesos in cold cash from vaults in the building. They allowed us access to a video of the opening of the vault. Yeah. 
limpak, limpak po na sa lapi. Nakubra mula sa mga biktima ng love scam sa iba't ibang bahagi ng mundo. Isa po sa mga biktima na ito ay si Elias Michael. Pumayag siya na gamitin ang kanyang pangalan. Kaninang umaga lamang, bago ang hearing na ito, ay nakausap siya ng aking staff. Play po natin ang video dahil ito po ay unang pagkakataon na may madidinig tayo mula sa other side of the fence. Hi, Michael. Hello. Can you hear and see me again? Yes, yes. Um, can I just reconfirm? Can I just get your confirmation that you consent to um, this recording and to sharing your identity and your video um, in the Senate hearing on human trafficking to scam hubs? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. And just to uh, repeat our earlier conversation, you met a woman who introduced herself as Milia, is that correct? Um, in October yes. of uh, 2022, and is, um, you met her on um, Facebook? Yes. Facebook dating, and um, you developed a relationship over uh, the course of um, two months. And in December, she asked you to um, invest in cryptocurrency. Yes. And um, can you can you just um, state on the video how much you invested? Uh, just um, uh, initial investment was nine ninety, then up to about five thousand, and then after everything was said and done, they got about twenty eight thousand. Twenty eight thousand, and she um, and your uh, she cut off the relationship when. Uh, March 23rd. March 23rd of 2023, correct? Yes. Or, or March, okay, March 2023. Um, and you haven't heard from her since? Yes. Um, so also one thing I've, I've come across when I've done some re reading on the subject afterwards is that sometimes we'll have um, people do some of it and then they can do have some other people do some of the texting and stuff almost like a group so i know for a fact i did have uh uh aud not audio excuse me video conversations with her in december after december i don't know if it was truly her or not um have you tried to reach out to her uh via any other means I tried creating another WhatsApp account uh, to okay. see if I can get into in touch with her that way, because I know sometimes you can block somebody, but if it, but I saw that with this with the other account, I still couldn't reach her, so I think that phone was cut off. Okay. And also, she also um I have been getting secondary scams from it. And I have uh, have been able to report the web the, uh, in one case one website to a um uh, was it a global anti scam organization as one Basel, other website. Yeah, they're wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to get a few uh, Facebook scammers shut down online, but also I'm in communicating with another person. I do believe she is also in the same situation because I have started to have video calls with her i can um send you a picture of her later on if you like that so so you're aware of her okay okay um that's very helpful yes um but you're you how how did you know that this person milia is filipina um i'm not a hundred percent sure but uh, there is a good chance because i've looked at other um pictures of filipinas so maybe she's filipino or maybe she's a, another ethnicity does she, sound, but, does she sound like me um a little bit so do you have a message for her um yeah i would tell her that i do forgive her i understand that if she really was a victim in this case that i i mean i don't really hold it against her i mean if she did choose to do it willingly then i'm i would hope to that she could uh 
own up to it and face justice, but ultimately I think she was uh, not in it of her own free will, especially since one of those videos, oh, not videos, one of those messages that I heard briefly said, uh, I really hurt, I'm going into hiding. And then, let, but that was before she had another video conversation with me. So it is kind of weird. Okay. And, and I would, uh, and I would hope to maybe if possible, um, develop some sort of friendship just to, for, so that we can mutually heal. Okay. So you still want to develop a friendship with her? Yes, if possible. Yeah. Okay. Michael, thank you. This is very helpful and um, we'll keep you updated. So, nagpapasalamat din po ang komite kay Michael. Uh, biktima rin siya ng lahat ng ito. At yung binanggit po niyang kasama ng pagbibiktima sa kanya na yung mga halagang uh, 990, 5,000, 28,000, yan po ay uh, dolyares. So, muli salamat kay Michael. Ang iligtas naman po sa raid, uh, kamakailan ay 1,368 human trafficking victims, all from different countries in Asia, and in some cases, even outside Asia. Ang dami-dami po nating katanungan. Una, paano po nakapasok sa Pilipinas ang ganyang kadaming foreign nationals? Yung mga nakausap ko kahapon sa airport, sila dumaan, at ang kwento pa ng isa, Nagbigay siya ng picture ng itsura niya at damit niya bago siya sumakay sa airplane papunta dito. Nagtutugma sa kwento ng nauna kong Indonesian witness na si Elias Ridwan na hiningan din siya ng picture para makilala siya ng mga kinaukulan dito. Hindi ba natin matatapos ang corruption sa ating airports? Secondly, if this is just one scam hub, and this scam hub contains a thousand foreign nationals, and we know that there are other scam hubs in Clark and in the country, ilan na po kaya ang foreign nationals na nandito working scams? Di ko po maiwasang isipin na sa ganyang karaming foreign nationals, paano po kung masingitan tayo ng kahit isang terorista? Thirdly, I really laud our law enforcement agents for the raid of Clark's Sun Valley. But I also know the high cost to our resources. Alam ko po na ang DOJ iyakat ay nagpapakain araw-araw sa mga rescuees. At alam ko din na in many instances, we bear the cost of repatriation. Paano ito matitigil? Eh araw-araw pa po ang recruitment. At paano po ang mga scam hubs na patuloy pa din ang recruitment? Patuloy pa din ang operations. Fourthly, as I've also learned from the case of Sun Valley, these scam hubs hide under the licenses of POGOs. This actually validates what was said by our expert resource person, Dr. Alvin Kamba, that POGOs provide a legal layer to these hubs, and the operations of these hubs remain beyond regulatory scrutiny. Ang malinaw po sa akin ay kailangan na itong tapusin. Uh, parating po, uh, dear colleagues, si Sen. Rafi Tulfo, and uh, tatanoyin ko sila kung meron din silang opening statement. Uh, in the meantime, may I ask our committee secretary to please acknowledge uh, the resource persons and to administer the oath dun sa mga hindi pa nakapanumpa. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the committee would like to acknowledge the presence of the following resource person. From the Department of Justice, we have ASEC Francis John Tejano. Fra uh, from the Interagency Council Against Trafficking, we have USEC Nicolas Felix T. From the, Clark, from the Clark International Airport Task Force Against Trafficking, we have the Provincial Prosecutor Ramoncito Benvenido T. Ocampo. Then from, uh, together with Deputy City Prosecutor Darwin Cañete, Senior Assistant Provincial Prosecutor Generoso Legaspi, Assistant Prosecu Provincial Prosecutor James Escalona, Assistant Provincial Prosecutor Dindo Beber, Assistant Provincial Prosecutor Marizen Ablola Labang, Mr. Grayson Adrian Cañete. From the National Interagency Task Force Against Trafficking, we have the Provincial Prosecutor Raymond Jonathan Liedo. 
Then from the Bureau of Investigation, we have uh, Attorney Efren Abantau. Do you mean the, Bureau of so, Immigration, Comsec? Uh, we have actually from the Bureau. Uh, from the Antai, we have. Uh, no, NBI. Uh, from the, uh, we have from the NBI, uh, Efren Abantau. Then from the Anti-Human Trafficking Division, we have Attorney Catherine Olasco. Then from the um, Bureau of Immigration, we have Commissioner Norman G. Tansinko, together with Attorney Arvin Santos, Attorney Fortunato Manahan Jr., Attorney Romaine Pascual, Attorney Jose Carlitos Licas, Ms. Anne Camille Mina, Jose Dennis Pavier, then for the Department of Foreign Affairs, we have Director Lawrence Dantes, Director Charles Lawrence Ching, and uh, De uh, Deputy Undersecretary Arnold Talizayan and uh, Director Ana Marie Santos. From the Office of the Undersecretary for Civilian S of Security and Consular Affairs, we have Deputy Undersecretary Arnold Talizayan, the same. Then from the Office of Civilian Security Department of Foreign Affairs, we have Director Ana Marie Santos. Then from the Department of Social Welfare and Development, we have Mr. Jonathan Dirain. Then Ms. Venus Ribultela. Then from uh, the Department of Migrants Workers, we have ASEC Francis Ron de Guzman. From the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration, we have Director Jocelyn Hapal then Attorney Janelle Serrano. For the Philippine Coast Guard, we have Captain Habilino Sali. Then from the National Police, uh, National, Philippine National Police, we have um, Brigadier General Kirby John Craft. Then from the um, direct, uh, for the PNP Aviation Security, we have uh, Police Colonel Christopher Abrahano. Then uh, from the PNP Anti-Cyber Crime Group, we have Police Brigadier General Sidney Kernia, together with uh, Police Colonel Villamor Tuliao, Police Colonel Alejandria Silvio, Police Colonel Nobody Castro Aglipay, Police Colonel Deodenis Joy Marmol, Police Lieutenant Colonel Anacleto Daliva Jr. For the... Uh, PNP Women and Children Protection Center, we have Police Colonel Mary Grace Madayag. Then from the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, we have Robert Luquiao, Retired General Raul Villanueva, Attorney Chesa Maris Fernandez, then uh, Attorney, Attorney Arnold Ferdinand Salbosa, then we have from uh, the International Organization for Migration, we're still waiting for their chief admission, but we have with us Itai Veriri and Yuko Tomina. Then from the Nino Aquino International Airport Terminal Managers, we have Mr. Luterio Torricampo, Terminal 1, Mr. Sin Joselito Sunga, Terminal 2, we have Mr. Lauro Francisco, Terminal 3, we have Mr. Arnel Atis, Terminal 4, from the Manila International Airport Authority, we have Mr. Manuel Gonzalez. Then the Assistant General Manager for Operation, Mr. Rafael S. Regular. Then from the Luzon International Premier Airport Development Corporation, we have Attorney Manuel Joseph Franco. Then uh, from the Clark Development Corporation, we have Attorney Noel Mina Dimineses. Then uh, from the joining us online, University of Denver, Dr. Alvin Kamba. Then we have alias Jason. Jason. Then to represent the DSWD, we have ASEC Elaine Palarconia. Uh, may I request uh, our resource person not present during our previous hearings to please stand up, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Portia Manalad. 
please raise your hand, right hand and repeat after me. I, please state your name. Do solemnly swear that I will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth for this committee. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, Comsec and dear colleagues. Uh, the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Rafi Tulfo. Thank Senator you. Rafi, would you like to make an opening statement? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I would like to commend the PNP Anti-Cybercrime Group for a job well done, successful raid on May 4, 2023, which resulted to the rescue of 1,000 foreign nationals that are supposed to be victims of uh, human trafficking. Uh, Madam Chair, if you would allow me, I have I have to go directly to uh, questioning uh, the Bureau of Immigration and the CDC, if it's uh, possible. Sen Rafi, uh, before we open the questioning, and I, I will uh, ask you to do that if you need to, meron lang tayong isang importanteng uh, presentation muna okay. mula sa IACAT. So I think at this juncture, it's important to hear from our law enforcement in order to help us better understand and navigate uh, this issue. So I'd like to call on the DOJ IACAT to make a short presentation on this issue of human trafficking in scam hubs. Perhaps, you said zeroing in on the uh, Clark raid, but then also providing the committee a grasp of the bigger picture. Uh, may I further suggest, you said that uh, the focus could be firstly on the scale of this problem, what the IACAT knows so far, what patterns are emerging. Uh, and uh, then secondly, the interventions of government and the challenges government faces in providing these interventions. And thirdly, what can be done moving forward? So you said you have the floor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good morning, ma'am. Uh, good morning, Senator Tulfo. Thank you for giving DOJ and IACAT an opportunity to present um, the efforts made by the different member agencies, many of whom are present this morning. Um, Thank you. So this present this brief presentation is a situation on the trafficking in persons and key actions taken by IACAT member agencies on this modus of human trafficking that involves uh, scam hubs, not just in the not just in the Philippines, but across the region. Our response is divided into two main parts. First is the concern for inbound trafficking meaning the trafficking of foreign nationals in scam hubs in the Philippines, which was the, the topic of the, the most recent Senate hearing. Um, the other matter, the other part is the, is, are, are the strategies on the outbound concern, which was tackled during the first two hearings. This pertains to Filipino nationals being trafficked in scam hubs in the region, the Golden Triangle, particularly Myanmar, Laos, and Cambodia. First, for an overall discussion on scam hubs, Many of the many of the trends, many of the observations of scam hubs have already been discussed in this hearing, as well as as well as a lot of material online. Allow me just to highlight um, some bullet points on this concern. First is that the, the establishment is usually registered as a legitimate Pogo business or a or a service provider for bis, for Pogos, but it is wholly or part partly partially involved in online crypto cur, cryptocurrency scamming. Second is the workers are hired through online job postings, mostly on Facebook, Telegram, and WhatsApp. Third is that workers are recruited as call center agents, are, are promised high salary and good working conditions, but, but it turns out they are forced to engage in criminal activities such as scamming. Fourth is the profile of the trafficking victims of scam hubs differs significantly from traditional victim profiles. They are typically young, from 18 to 35. They are tech savvy multilingual, and educated. The modus operandi involves confiscation of the passports and their movements are outside are restricted. So these scam hubs, typically they are in complexes that are, that are walled with barbed wires that are subject to security. Um, next, the victims are work, work for at least 16, hours, 16 to 18 hours a day without overtime pay. The victims are mostly males ordered by their handlers to pretend to be attractive women in dating sites to entice their clients to invest in fake cryptocurrency. 
And finally, finally, there are consequences for 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 not complying with their quotas or wanting to leave, such as salary deductions or even being subjected to the dark room, as showed by the senator earlier. Um, so we again we noted that for inbound, there are these the, the modus is similar as for outbound. But then the strategy is different. Our approach to address um, inbound trafficking and outbound trafficking for these cam hubs are different. For for the for the inbound concern, allow us to 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 use the Clark Sun Valley case, the raid in Clark as a as an illustration. Um, the Clark the Clark raid took place back in June four, back in May four. As a result of the raid, um, more than one thousand foreign nationals were rescued. Um, several concerns um, were highlighted immediately upon immediately after the operation. First is victim assistance. Uh, victim assistance was mostly shouldered by PNP ACG um, through through funds provided by the Office of the Executive Secretary through the PAOC. Um, but at the same time, we sought assistance from other government agencies, including the Department of Social Welfare and Development. This is data provided by DSWD on the on the number of victims who were assisted. Uh, note that. The Filipino, some Filipinos were rescued as part of the operation, but they were later on identified as not identified as trafficking victims because they were not subject to the same conditions as the foreign nationals. Uh, they were not forced to engage in criminal activities. They were actually employed in, in tasks such as utility and, um, and cafeteria, and they were actually allowed to go home. Nevertheless, because they, were, they lost their jobs, they were still provided financial assistance by DSWD. Aside from the DSWD, we also tapped the DOH on site, considering the, the volume of the victims who were there. And DOH was able to provide um, medical assistance, COVID testing, as well as bring some of the victims who, who needed immediate attention to hospitals. Um, the, other, the other aspect of the operation, of the post-operation, is the repatriation of the foreign nationals that were rescued. Four agencies um, are, are coordinating, are the lead for this aspect. First, there's the there's the PNP ACG who who produced the list, no, produced the list of the foreign nationals, as well as they they were able to find the passports of most of the foreign nationals, which is able to facilitate their repatriation. Next is the Bureau of Immigration, who processed the foreign nationals, as well as um, issued the allowed departure order for the foreign nationals, and 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 waived the penalties that are normally imposed on foreign nationals who are working here without visa or overstaying. Next is the um, is the DFA, the Department of Foreign Affairs, particularly the uh, the Office for Asia Pacific Affairs, who coordinated with the different embassies for any assistance that they can provide to their nationals. And finally, it's PAGCOR, who provided the funds for the repatriation of most of the victims. Um, the following is the data su supplied by Bureau of Immigration. Um, can you go back a little bit? Uh, one one slide. There, so 1,112 foreign nationals were endorsed for repatriation. Um, PNP ACG was able to find the visas for 936. Um, 176 foreign nationals don't have visas. Um, uh, sorry, 176 national foreign nationals don't have passports. Some passports were found on the site, but these passports do not correspond to particular victims who were rescued. The total of passports that are not identified to a particular victim is 196. Next slide. Um, this is the figure for the admission status of some of the foreign nationals who were rescued. Most of them actually have visas, whether um, 9A, 9G visas, or visas secured from Clark. Next slide. Okay. So aside from these agencies, we also tap NGOs, such as the IOM, to assist with the repatriation of some of the foreign nationals. Um, particularly, um, the embassy, the um, Nepal. Nepal doesn't. Nepal does not have an embassy here, so we relied on IOM to be able to process the Nepalese victims and and help with their repatriation. We also tapped the services of um, one of the NGO partners, NGO members of IACA, the Blas Ople Policy Center, to assist with the, with these other foreign nationals. So right now, repatriation of the foreign nationals is happening. As of today, 150 foreign nationals have been repatriated. We have 140 scheduled for this week. We aim to be able to repatriate all foreign nationals within the next two to three months. Okay. 
the final aspect of this operation in Clark is the case investigation and prosecution. As a result of the raid, um, several individuals, seven foreign nationals were identified as the traffickers were arrested and were subject to inquest proceedings in the DOJ. Um, they waived the right to, uh, to, to Article 125 of the Revised Penal Code to be able to file their counter affidavit. As of, this, as of today, the case against these 10 foreign nationals has been submitted for resolution. The crimes that they were charged include violation of Anti-Trafficking Persons Act, violation of the Cybercrime Prevention Act, as well as serious illegal detention. Next slide. Okay, so those are the statistics for the number of respondents. One, one Malaysian, two, Chinese, two, two Indonesians, and seven Chinese. And we were able to convince uh, 19 foreign nationals to act as witnesses. These, these victim witnesses are currently under custody of the IACA Tip Center and are, endor are for endorsement to the Witness Protection Program. Um, next slide. Finally, this is not the end of case investigation and prosecution. Um, PNP ACG is in coordination with the two task forces of IACAT, the Clark, the Clark Interagency Task Force Against Trafficking and the National Interagency Task Force Against Trafficking for the continuation of on-site investigation and for case buildup against any other respondents. These cases would go through the regular process of preliminary investigation rather than inquest. What are some of the challenges and ways forward for the for the outbound modus of human trafficking? These include a, a limited adequate facility to accommodate rescued foreign nationals, especially if they are at this scale. So what we did is just to house them in the facility, in the in the Clark facility. We have limited manpower and resources for the funding of their daily sustenance as well as repatriation costs. Uh, we have limited expertise to to, to, to track the flow of finances, particularly in the cryptocurrency that's being used. And finally, um, if the victim's travel documents, particularly their passports are not, not with them or cannot be found, uh, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to verify their identities and cause their repatriation. Fortunately, in this case, a majority of the victim's passports were located by PNP ACG. Um, considering the... Um, the difficulties that we may face when it comes to, to mass rescue operations. Some of the ways forward include continuing in small scale operations, exercising visitation and inspection powers of regulatory bodies such as PAGCOR and local governments for, over POGO licensees and lessees. Nevertheless, we, we acknowledge that um, the value, you know, the strength of, of a rate of this magnitude when it comes to these efforts. Therefore, we will continue to, to give priority to the raids. But if our resources are, are stretched, we will have to explore these alternative, alternative avenues. Finally, we will continue intelligence gathering and case buildup and investigation for other sites. And we will continue to engage non iacat stakeholders, such as Clark, PAGCOR, and the LGUs, who, who have been active in coordinating with us for, for this particular operation. And of course, we will engage social media companies because a lot of their recruitment happens on social media, and social media, and we need to we need their we need their help to be able to address that aspect of the of the operation. So, um, for for this particular operation, we'd like to thank the agencies, offices, and NGOs who took part in the in the raid and the activities after. Again, I, I reiterate the, the praise given by the senators to PNP ACG, who is the hero in this entire operation under the leadership of, of General, General Ernia and the, 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 the man on the ground, no? the man on the ground, see Colonel Toliao. We can't give enough recognition to PNP ACG for this, for this success. And then there's PAOC, DOJ IACAT, the IACAT Task Forces, DSWD, DOH, DFA, the Bureau of Immigration, AMLC, IOM, the Blast Ople Center, CDC, and PAGCOR. So clearly, this is a this is an operation that requires interagency cooperation, and in this instance, we were able to 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 secure the cooperation of a lot of the agencies. Uh, now let's proceed to the other aspect of this this modus, which is the outbound concern, which, as we as we mentioned, was the was the focus of the first two Senate hearings for this topic. For the outbound concern, um, the, the different member agents of IACAT have been active to, to come up with a response, and that response can be divided into five main, five main um, categories. First is border control. Second is repatriation efforts. Third is an information campaign. 
Fourth is a focus on the backdoor channel. And fifth is regional partnerships. The first three um, measures have been, we've been very active in the first three measures. The latter two, we've, uh, we've initiated initiated moves for this, but we, we hope to be able to, to, to further strengthen these, these latter two measures for outbound trafficking. Okay, next slide. Uh, for border control, um, we focus on the stricter implementation of departure formalities because one thing that we noted is that the profile of the victims for this modus of trafficking is very different. A lot of them go abroad as tourists and they can pass as tourists with legitimate means of income. Therefore, it was um, imperative that, that IACAT through the BI more strictly implements departure formalities. At the same time, we strengthened the different airport task forces to assist BI in the implementation of the departure formalities. The following is the data secured from the Bureau of Immigration on, on deferred departure of passengers in the course of implementing the departure formalities. For this year, until as of May 15, 2023, the Bureau of Immigration processed more than 2.5 million Filipinos for departure. Out of these 2.5 million, 39,000, a little bit over 39,000 or 1.5 percent, was referred for secondary inspection. This means that more than 98 percent were able to pass through BI without secondary inspection. Among the 39,000 who were referred for secondary inspection, majority, around 60 percent, were allowed to depart, um, and around 40 percent were, were were deferred. Their departures were deferred. So total of total Filipinos who, whose departures were deferred is only 0.54% of the total Filipinos who are allowed to depart. Um, this is the list of the countries in the Asia Pacific where Filipinos were, were Filipinos departures were, were, were deferred. Um, topping the list is Thailand because Thailand is a, is, is a, is a transit country, transit country for trafficking to Myanmar, um, Laos, and Cambodia. And second in the list are Singapore followed by Malaysia. The causes for deferred, departure, deferred departures vary. The most common cause is the incomplete documents. Um, out of those whose departures are deferred, around 1% are identified as likely trafficking victims, and they're referred to the task forces for investigation. At this point, allow us to, to just point out that this point out that contrary to some observations that this means that the far departure procedure is inefficient. It is not. One the 1% are those who are, who, who are identified by BI to be likely trafficking victims. And identifying them as trafficking victims is, uh, is a difficult task, especially if you have limited time to examine these victims. At the same time, some of the victims are sadly determined to leave the country. Nevertheless, those who are whose departures are deferred for missing documents or incomplete documents, um, they would they they are vulnerable to trafficking had they been allowed to how they had they been allowed to depart. Aside from that, the the task forces are coordinating with BI to provide intelligence on on Filipinos who are likely to be traffic victims. What we do is that we we provide advanced information to the BI officers on particular individuals and the BI officers would, would zero in on them to, to verify if they are indeed likely trafficking victims. This is the figure as of May, May 15 of Filipinos who were, who were intercepted as a result of tips from intelligence reports. These efforts by Bureau of Immigration as well as other member agencies of IACA to, to strictly monitor departures have resulted in in, in some cases, some cases against the principal traffickers. Um, sadly, one of the challenges is that most of the victims who are intercepted and even those who are repatriated don't wanna file cases and we can't force them to file cases. But we are fortunate that we are able to convince some, some to do so. Uh, aside from that, we were able to, BI was able to, to point out one of their employees who, 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 who is likely complicit in the trafficking of Filipinos. This is the case of the immigration officer from Clark Airport. This officer is already facing criminal charges before, before the DOJ and administrative charges likewise before the DOJ. At the same time, BI already identified another employee in, in NAIA who, who may likewise be implicated in trafficking. And we have initiated criminal and administrative investigations on this, on this immigration officer. 
Uh, next slide. Okay, next slide. We note that there were concerns on the strict implementation of departure formalities. That's why um, IACAT, particularly the lead agencies for this, um, BI, DMW, DOJ, and DFA, are in the process of revising the departure formalities. Um, just yesterday, we had a public consultation on the latest draft of the departure formalities, and we will just implement some of the suggestions, and we'll present this for approval in the regular council meeting of the IACAT on June 6, next week. Um, aside from the BI's efforts to strictly implement departure formalities, we have parallel efforts abroad to repatriate the different Filipinos who find themselves trafficked there. These repatriation efforts are led by the DFA and the DMW. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, this is the latest data supplied by the DFA on its repatriation efforts. As of May 15, 175 uh, possible tip victims of Filipinos have been repatriated from abroad. Next slide. Okay, these are these are the the countries from from where the Filipinos have been repatriated. Most of them are from Myanmar. Next, Cambodia. DMW likewise provided data on the repatriation efforts, which data um, is consistent with the data supplied by the DFA. Uh, may we go through the data? Thank you. Okay, next slide. Okay, next slide. Okay. So aside from aside from the repatriation and the strict implementation of departure formalities, the different IACAT member agencies have, have engaged in an information campaign to inform our nationals of the dangers of dangers of being trafficked abroad and to warn them against these crypto cryptocurrency scam. In particular, we like to laud the Bureau of Immigration, which has been very active in their information campaign. Um, if you would look at the, the news, no, in, in a week, maybe, maybe three, three or five press releases on BI on on their interceptions in the airport, as well as reminders to the public to be wary of these types of these types of recruitment. And now that we've we strengthened our our task forces in the airport, we recognize that if victims are not able to go out through the airports, they seek the backdoor channel in the in Mindanao, in Zamboanga, in Tawi Tawi. Um, we are in the process of of getting together the different stakeholders for the backdoor channels to come up with an with an overall strategy to strengthen our backdoors. Um, but there have been several um, developments that would contribute to, to this endeavor. First is the establishment of Zamboanga City as a specialized non-trafficking justice zone through the Justice Sector Coordinating Council. This happened back in February. Uh, we also we also will have a Barangay Iyakat activity in Zamboanga next month. And finally, we, we, as we said, we, we intend to strengthen seaboard, seaport based task forces in closer coordination with the Philippine Coast Guard, who has been likewise very active with, with IACAT and referring, referring different, referring Filipinos who were intercepted in the back door to, to IACAT. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, this is data supplied by the Philippine Coast Guard on, the, on their various rescues for the year. So individuals rescued is 74. And these individuals are usually bound for Tawi Tawi, and they are detected by the Coast Guard through ticket inspections, roving inspections, and phone calls. Next slide. The Coast Guard involve, observe certain modus operandi for, for the trafficking or for the transportation of Filipinos through the back doors. Uh, this includes the, that they are advised to, to, to use small boats, no? to small boats because these are these are these are better able to 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 escape detection by the coast guard more um aside from that next slide some victims particularly women disguise themselves by wearing local hijabi or lo local headdresses thank you so again next slide please so again next slide uh, another aspect we need to work on is regional partnerships. 
because it is acknowledged that this problem of scam mobs is not just a problem in the Philippines, it's a problem in the region. And a lot of international organizations, such as including IOM, who is here today, have acknowledged the scale of the problem. And, and the best way that we can address the problem is, is a regional way. So we need to initiate um, dialogue coordination with our partners abroad to be able to address this problem better. So we, we yeah, it does have a, an activity every year, the Manila International Dialogue on Human Trafficking. And last year, the Manila International Dialogue focused on regional concerns, and we were able to touch base with, with counterparts, different counterparts in the region. And this has resulted in ongoing talks with prospective partners in the fight against human trafficking. But nevertheless, a lot of work still has to be done. And we hope that the next few months would, would find us cementing our relationship with our, with our regional counterparts better. So next, so that's the end of the presentation. Thank you once again to the Senate Committee for giving us this opportunity. Thank you also, uh, USECT, especially for early on, including identifying as part of the modus that uh, these scam hubs are registered as legitimate POGO businesses. Before the chair asks additional uh, follow-up questions to you, T, and before uh, Senator Tufo asks questions of the Bureau of Immigration, the chair would like to recognize the presence of Senator Francis Tolentino and Senator Sherwin Gachalian, uh, the author of one of the two um, resolutions uh, that we're hearing today. Would the colleagues uh, like to make opening statements? No opening remarks, please. No introductory statement, but just one question, if I may be allowed. Please, San Francis. I, I, I uh, listened to your presentation, but I missed one thing. Perhaps I was late. Is there any data concerning repatriations made wherein those repatriated willingly or unwillingly return to the previous places where they were apprehended or rescued? Because I was, I was in the Golden Triangle last month and one of the uh, diplomats there mentioned that some of those who were rescued eventually returned and transformed themselves as the recruiters or willingly, uh, may, willingly allowed themselves to be part of this elaborate scheme. Do you have any data? I, wala ako nakita kanina. We don't have collated data on those instances. To confirm that yes. statement that I made a while ago that uh, indeed there were some repatriated, rescued uh, victims. Uh, amounts were spent by the government for the repatriation, hotel expenses, food allowances, etc., etc., plane tickets, and then eventually they returned. And then yes. they were repatriated and rescued again. We confirm, Mr. Senator, we have anecdotal data on, on Filipinos who, unfortunately, after repatriation, um, find themselves once again being victimized abroad. Just recently, um, just the other, right now, we, have a, we had a team who went to Thailand to, to facilitate the repatriation of 18 Filipinos. One of those Filipinos is actually her second time to find herself in this situation. And like my last question, Madam Chair, is that you consider the, this persons as victims or willing victims. willing victims, dressed up victims? At this point, sir, our default is really to treat them as victims unless we find any evidence that they are perpetrators or traffickers. Kaya niloloko na lang ang gobyerno nun, gastos tayo sa hotel, tapos papalipa rin natin pabalik, pahinga rito, alis uli. Sir, um, we, we consider that possibility. And in fact, it's one of the challenges in this modus of trafficking that's been observed. So perhaps by... in your next presentation, you can have that as part yes, of sir. the uh, challenges yes, sir. Uh, confronting your uh, interagency committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, thank you San Francis. And uh, thank you, uh, USEC T, for the affirmation that uh, the interagency committee considers uh, these victim survivors as victims. Uh, the chair uh, shares that perspective and, it, and appreciates it uh, when our government agencies in the executive as well uh, will, uh, will, will hold on to that approach to cracking down on and ending trafficking and rehabilitating its uh, victim survivors in all um, aspects. So some follow-up questions, uh, a few to your presentation before uh, the questions of uh, Sen Rafi to the Bureau of Immigration. So. Um, Yusekti, you did confirm that um, legitimate 
Pogo license holders provide a legal cover or layer for these scam hubs? And uh, you you have data you have data supporting this, right? Um, we don't have the collated data for right. which which um Pogo which license Pogos are are suspected suspected of engaging in human trafficking. Uh, maybe we can refer that to to Pagor. All right, we'll do that uh, in a bit. And has the IACAT identified scam hub hotspots? Because if you look at the Pogo job ads sa Telegram or sa Facebook, paulit-ulit yung yung mga locations naman, no? Paranaque, Clark, uh, Cavite, Pasay. Nagjajay po ba ito sa data rin ninyo? Paranaque and Clark po. Especially, so Paranaque and Clark. Um, then yesterday, um, in the ocular inspection, it was mentioned that one of the rescuees uh, tried to take their own life. Uh, what interventions are being made to provide also psychosocial support and counseling? Ma'am, we can, can can we refer that question to DSWD? All right, we'll do that in a bit, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Asek, Elaine, if you could address that concern first uh, when we come to DSWD. Just one last follow-up question at this point to the presentation of uh, USECTI. You mentioned that some of the rescuees don't even have their travel documents or proper identification documents. Man lamang. So what is our plan for them? Uh, our plan for them is, this is where the embassies come into play. We really need to coordinate with the embassies for them to identify if a particular victim is indeed their national. And if that victim is indeed their national, they would they would be able to provide the, the necessary travel documents to facilitate repatriation. All right. Thank you, Yusekti. Okay. Asik Elaine, if, if you could uh, at least that first question first uh, before the chair recognizes San Rafi for the BI. Uh, ano pong psychosocial support at counseling para dun sa nag-self-harm at nagsubok ano, magpatiwakan? Uh, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, on May 20, when we received the report, uh, the psychologist of Field Office 3, the SWD Field Office 3, administered a mini mental state examination. Um, and uh, the 25-year-old Vietnamese uh, was referred to the uh, Department of Health for a comprehensive uh, psychological assessment. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Salamat, Asakilin, and uh, the committee will appreciate if there are any updates about the the condition, hopefully the well-being of the patient. Uh, we will uh, submit, Madam Chair. Salamat po. Sen Rafi, uh, your questions uh, to the Bureau of Immigration. You thank you, Madam Chair. My question to the uh, Bureau of Immigration uh, pertains to <clears throat> the 1,004 nationals that were rescued uh, during a raid conducted by the PNP on May 4, 2023. Uh, inside the uh, Clark Development Corporation. Uh, Commissioner Tansinko, ano po yung visa na gamit itong 1,000 na foreign nationals na, na rescue sa loob ng CDC upon entering the Philippines? Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, Senator. Commissioner. <clears throat> of the 11 nationalities that... Uh, were involved in this uh, uh, raid. Uh, no, sir, yung 1,000 po. Uh, the, the, 1, yes, the, the 1,000 uh, consists of 11 nationalities. Oh, okay. 11 nationalities, so, all right. For India and China and Taiwan, they enter the country using what we call the Section 9A visa or the tourist visa issued Wait, by the consulates okay, in visa. the country where... So, so India, Taiwan, and what's the other country, sir? China. China, okay. So they use tourist visa. Yeah, the, the 9A visa, 9A tourist visa issued by the consulates. Right. Um, so, uh, Department of Foreign Affairs. Sure, tourist visa po ang gamit nila. Yes, sir. All right. And then the other nationalities? The other nationalities, Bhutan... Morocco, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, Nepal, Thailand, and Vietnam, they are uh, entitled to the visa-free entry into the country under Executive Order Number 408. Visa-free entry? Yes, as tourist. As tourist again? As tourist. All right. So, kung tourist po yung visa na hawak nila, bakit po sila nakapagtrabaho sa loob ng Clark Development Corporation? In the in the entry, they are granted a thirty day. The initial authorized stay is thirty days upon entry. Okay. All right. So usually, the their entry, the purpose of their entry is as tourist. Right. 
Okay. It's a, a so when, when they entered the Philippines, the country, uh, upon uh, being interviewed by a, uh, an immigration official, and they will tell the immigration official interviewing them na andito ko para mag, mag tour. Yes, sir. At hindi ako magtatrabaho rito. Yes, sir. Because okay. that's the condition of exactly. the country. Yes, sir. All right. So after that, sir, no, after the interview, uh, sa immigration and they're given 30 days normally yeah. para mag liwaliw, mag tour sa Pilipinas, what happens next? Usually, if they stay more than 30 days, they apply for an extension of their stay as tourists. And can you na apply an extension, sir? In immigration. Okay. And uh, um, most likely, dito po sa 1,000, nag-grant sila na extension. There are some, uh, because the arrivals, based on the, our records, some of them arrive only on May, uh, April, March, April of uh, 2023. So okay. the, they still have uh, valid authorized stay in the country okay. as tourists. And some of them were granted extension visa. Yes, sir. Para makapag-stay longer than 30 days. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, after na sila po yung mag-grant ng another 30 days extension sa kanilang visa, uh, sila po ay nagtrabaho sa Clark Development Corporation sa loob? They applied for the conversion of their tourist visa into working visas. Kanino po sila nag-apply? Uh, based on our record, sir, uh, some of them uh, applied for a Subic Clark working visa. Okay. We applied with the Clark Development Corporation. Uh, some of them applied for the Section 9G visa or the prearranged employment visa with the Bureau of Immigration. And uh, some of them are still under tourist okay. visa. All right. Now, sir, pumasok sila dito as tourists at nag-swear siguro sa mga immigration uh, agents na sila ay magtutur lang at hindi sila magtatrabaho. Tama. Yes, sir. Now, after 30 days, they asked for an extension and they were given extension and then later, mag apply sila under section, what was that, sir? 19? 9G. 9G. Para sila ay magtrabaho. Yes, sir. Isn't that odd? Na they came here as tourists and nangako sila na magtutur sila and then babalik after ng tour nila and then ah nagbagong isip ko ako'y magtatrabaho pala rito eh, bakit Sir Rafi, if I may interject we actually have a, with a, a survivor here a victim survivor alias Jason maybe we can also ask him now witness po ng iyakat if he applied for an extension on his pero, visit yeah, later on Madam Chair all right, uh, but uh, then right after San Rafi, I will ask uh, Jason yeah. to address okay. this point. So please proceed. Isn't it odd, uh, Commissioner, that isn't it odd na nanumpa sila pagpasok sa bansa natin na sila ay uh, magtutur lang and then nagbagong isip mag apply sila as uh, mag-apply sila ng uh, i-convert nila, sorry, yung kanilang visa into uh, working visa 9G. So, di ba dapat uh, doon pa lamang red flag na to at hindi na sila aprobahan, sinungaling ka. Sabi mo, magtutur ka lang, ngayon magpapa-extend ka. Uh, and then pinag pinagbinga ka namin mag-extend, siguro nakulangan ka pa, hindi pa pa siya lang buracay, amampulo, kaya nagpa-extend ka. And now, after all that, gusto mo na pala magtabaho rito. Eh, nanluloko ka, hindi ka namin ikagrant. Di ba, ganun dapat po. Uh, the all under our present uh, laws and regulation, all first time foreign nationals entering the country, all of them are entering the country under a tourist visa category. Okay. Uh, and when they are already in the country, they are allowed to convert into other immigration status like working visa. Is, is it visa. under, meron ho ba tayong provision sa batas natin na pinapayagan yan or meron ba batas tayo na binabawal yan? Under uh, Commonwealth Act 613, you know, under the, the Philippine Immigration Act, that's the the existing regulation. So article. maybe, Madam Chair, it's time na i-amend natin yan uh, through legislation, pagbawal na natin yan kasi later on I'll explain kung bakit. Now, Let's go to CDT. That, Sen. Rafi, is a possible uh, yes. for inclusion in the committee recommendations. Kasi, ma'am, may sasabihin ko sa inyo, ma'am, uh, Madam Chair, this is a uh, matter of national security, and I'll explain to you why later. Uh, next, sa CDC, 
Nasan yung Mataga CDC rito? Yes. Black Development Corporation? Senator. Before we move on to the CDC, uh, maybe now is the time we can ask uh, alias uh, Jason uh, the question related to one of the points being asked by Sen Rafi earlier. So, Jason, uh, terima kasih for being here and salamat to the IACAT for making uh, the witness available. I was going to a very important question, Madam Chair, but anyway. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, right after this one. Uh, Jason, you heard the question of Senator Tool for earlier. So the chair would like to ask you, uh, what was your visa when you came here to the Philippines? Uh, the, the first I came here as uh, using tourist visa. So you were using yeah. a tourist visa. And uh, eventually, did you apply for an extension on that tourist visa? Uh, not me directly, but uh, the, com the company offered me uh, some some type of visa called 9G visa. 9G uh, visa? Yeah, 9G visa to allow us uh, to keep working in here. All right. And at this time, did you have your passport with you? Uh, no. You did not? No, I don't have All right. Thank you, Jason. We will uh, return to you later in the hearing. Sen Rafi, please continue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yun nga po, sinagot na po yung kanina ni Commissioner Tansinko yung exactly what uh, our witness uh, just said. Thank you, uh, Mr. General. Ay, <laughs> Jason, okay, talking about it. You're welcome. All right. Uh, CDC. Yes, Senator. Nasa yung CDC natin. Hello po. Uh, Good morning po, Senator. Black Development Corporation. Ma'am, no magpa-convert from tourist to working visa, itong mga um, foreign nationals na na-rescue, yes, CDC, bakit niyo po inaprobahan? Bakit niyo po inalaw na mabigyan ng 9G visa na para makapagtrabaho? Kung ang sinabi ko kanina sa immigration, sinabi nila sila ay tourist, and then later on, eh, mag-apply mag sila ng working visa at papayagan natin magtrabaho para bang gaguhan niloko tayo sinabi sa immigration pagpasok sa uh, airport natin na tourist lang kami hindi kami magtatrabaho right yes senator and they 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 have to prove it and then later on yung pala mag-apply sila ng trabaho rito at pinayagan nyo yes. why did that happen uh, senator if i may explain po as mentioned by Commissioner, meron po tayong tinatawag na conversion of admission status at ito nga po ay nangyayari at allowed under Commonwealth Act according to him. Commonwealth Act. Opo. Ngayon po, pag dumating po yan na tourist, pwede po siya mag-apply. Matagal na po itong batas na ito when you say Commonwealth Act? Um, possibly circa 1930s. Ano po? 1930s. Maybe 1940s, 30s, 50s, something like that, right? Okay. Yes. So, using that Commonwealth visa na naabuso ngayon, so pinapayagan natin itong mga tourists na papasok from uh, different countries na later on ay magtatrabaho. Magsisinungaling sa airport pagpasok sa immigration, sasabihin tourist lang talaga ako and then later magtatrabaho na. At pinapayagan niyo po yung mga sinungaling. You allow these people to lie? No, Why Senator. You allow this? Hindi po, Senator, because... Per the Subi Clark working visa, meron po tayong mga requirements. No, hindi nga po. No, no, no ma'am. Alam niyo naman, pagpasok nila ng Pilipinas, gamit-gamit nilang tourist visa, at nanumpa sila, nag-swear sila dyan sa immigration na ako'y tourist lamang. Hindi ako magtatrabaho dito. So, and then later on, pupunta sila sa CDC at magpapakonvert ng kanilang visa into uh, working visa. Sabi niyo, covered kasi ng Commonwealth Act yan. Pinapayagan niyo. Pero kung ako, hindi ako papayag, sasabihin ko, kung ako, ha, kung ako nasa posisyon ninyo, sabihin ko, teka muna, e niloloko mo kami. Pumasok ka rito sa bansa natin, dumaan ka sa immigration, sabi mo, ikaw ay magtuturan dito. Ngayon, pupunta ka sa opisina ko para magtrabaho. Niloloko mo kami. Di ba? Um, Senator, sa side po ng CDC, when they submit their application, we endorse it to the Bureau of Immigration for the issuance of the visa. Because in our current regulations, based on the Subi Clark working visa policy, given that CDC is an investment promotion agency, we give fiscal and non-fiscal incentives. Isa po doon yung non-fiscal is the foreign nationals of locators may be allowed to work 
In the pero, pero dapat, yeah, I, I don't see any problem letting foreign nationals work in our country, pero dapat with proper documents, sana from the point of origin, kumuha na sila ng proper visa, which is working visa, at doon na vet na sila na, na screen na sila, hindi yung dito na natin sila screen, kasi pagdating dito, eh, alam naman natin, talabak ang corruption dito, eh, madali nalang may unubre, ma maniubra yung system. In this case, na mamaniubra yung system because of corruption, I see clearly here, there's corruption's been happening for a long, long time, dyan sa loob ng CDC. Now, why did I say this is a this could be a national uh, security issue, Madam Chair? Because any foreign nationals from any country that has intention to create terroristic acts here in our country, they can always say, "I'm going to the Philippines as a tourist." Maga apply sa point of origin, and then pagdating dito, sila po ay magtatabaho, and who knows, they may be member of the PLA. And then they'll be member of that what we call sleeper cell. Alam niyo po yung sleeper cell? Sure. Na matutulog lang po sila dito, mag-work lang sila dito, simply lang they will blend in as regular foreign nationals with works. And then later on, pagkailangan na kailangan ng service nila, saka sila sasabog, puputok, saka sila gagawa ng lagim. So anyway, what I'm telling you now, CDC, okay, sige, pinayagan nyo, bigyan nyo trabaho because of that Commonwealth Act. Na nakapikit kayo, kahit alam nyo mali na, but you have the discretion to deny, right? If it's all in accordance with the requirements, sir. Hindi nga, hindi nga. But you have... Deny, sir. You can deny po. Exactly. Yes po. You have the... Pwede ka mag-deny. Opo, sir. All right. Kung ginagamit niyo po yung kukote niyo, pwede niyo i-deny. Kung ako, ha? Kung ako, gagamitin yung kukote ko, i-deny ko yun. So, para sa akin ito, opinion ko. So, kaya niyo pinayagan kasi hindi niyo ginamit yung kukote niyo. Ganun po yun. Okay. Now, let's move on. Nabigyan niyo po sila ng working visa. Now, nung sila po'y nabigyan ng working visa at nag-work sila doon sa Sun Valley, wala ho ba kayong ginagawang uh, inspection? Kasi alam ko, CDC, meron kayong tinatawag na visitation authority. Apo. At any moment, at any time, pwede kayong pumasok doon para mag-inspeksyon. Yes, Senator. Ginagawa niyo ba ito on a regular basis? At how long na ito nag-operate itong uh, Sun Valley kung saan may na-rescue itong PNP natin? Among mga 1,000 foreign nationals. How long have they been for the this operation? Valley, for the Sun Valley, Senator, they have been operating since September 29 of 2021. September 2021? 29. Se September 29? Opo, of 2021. So, several months na. Di ba dapat una gumagawa kayo ng regular visitation para i-check, especially ito ata, nasa bliss na, no, from one uh, company to another, ilan ang pinagpasapasan ito? Yes po, nag-start po yan sa Dongwang Corporation Dongwang, okay. which has a valid lease agreement with CDC in the year 2010. Okay. And then come 2018, there was a sub-lease agreement between Dongwang Corporation okay. and Sun Valley Clark Hub. Okay. Sun Valley Clark Hub is a Pagcor licensee holder as a Pogo Hub okay. which has a valid Pagcor accreditation. Okay. And then thereafter, uh, Sun Valley Clark Hub subleased it again to CGC Technologies Incorporated. Okay. And that was in the year 2019. Okay. And in the whole hub of Sun Valley, which, which has uh, eight buildings, yung dalawang building po doon, sinablease niya po yan ulit kay okay. CGC Technologies. Is that legal or illegal mag -sublease? That's allowed po. That's allowed. Okay. San Rafi and colleagues... Um, uh, CEO, President uh, Agnes de Vanadera of CDC is joining our okay. hearing. So she will also be available to ask our questions oh, you. for CDC. Please so, continue. So, so he, thank you, Madam Chair. So, hindi po illegal yon. Yes, po, that's Senator. Fine. But, hindi ba dapat nakita niyo po nagpasapasahan na po ng uh, lease agreement? Di ba parang something is not right here and, and uh, there's that uh, time na kailangan magbusisi na kayo. Uh, ano bang nangyari dito? At kasama yan sa inyong uh, visitation authority. So na yes, allowed naman po ang mga locators namin if there are provisions in their contract right. for further subleasing. Tama din po kayo, Senator, that we conduct regulatory inspections over our locators. Did you do that? Yes po. Primarily po, sir, Number one, CDC as the LGU po in the Clark Freeport zone is the entity that issues the business permits. So, isa sa mga ginagawa po namin for regulatory inspections are the fire, the occupancy permit, okay. 
So, 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 yung beso kayo naggawa nag, uh, ng uh, pagbisita o inspection dito po sa uh, CGC? Senator Rafi, for purposes of regulatory permits, that's conducted every year. Every However, way. we have our own public safety department. Ito po yung security services group namin. And under that group, meron po kaming tinatawag na operations and intelligence, and they are the ones roving okay. sa buong, to ensure the safety and security po of the whole Clark Free Party. All right, nandun na tayo. Pero yung sa operations, sabi nyo, may, may nag-inspeksyon. Bakit hindi niyo po nahuli? Bakit kinakailangan pa magsumbong yung uh, Indonesian uh, embassy sa ating PNP at yung PNP pang nakabulaga na outsider na nandiyan na po kayo sa loob, kayo na po mayari ng property, eh sana man lang naman manan nyo kung gumawa kayo ng proper uh, uh, pag pagbibisita, pagmamanman, eh nahuli niyo po agad. Eh bakit yung PNP pa? And PNP has to go to, to a lot of process, mag-file sila ng uh, search warrant from uh, the court, etc. Eh, samantalang kayo nandyan na, hindi nyo na kailangan yun dahil kayo yung nasa loob, kayo yung may, may power na to visit it and to uh, to make sure na sila gumagawa ng tama, which you didn't do. Uh, Se Senator Rafi, ang katotohanan po, para sa CDC management and the CDC board, there was really a failure of intelligence. And okay. as a consequence of this operation, uh, the board and the management created a special administrative committee Okay. Just to investigate and hear all of the security officials okay. of PSD, and they are now under preventive suspension, so, Senator Rafi. So there is a failure of intelligence at inamin niyo po yan. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, po. Now, uh, bakit po nagkaroon ng failure of intelligence? Because wala pong nakarating sa management or sa board na merong, let's say, red flag na po pala ang nangyayari dun sa hub na yun. Exactly. So, ilan pong mga uh, buildings o businesses o locators meron dyan sa loob ng CDC? Currently, we have around 1,300 locators, 1, Senator Rafi. 1,000 locators. Okay. Locators so, is, po. Yeah, isa lang itong CGC. Yes. So, itong 999, gaano po kayo ka-sure na this time hindi na ako kayo mag-fail sa inyong intelligence? Sir, because of this, to tell you honestly, we started to collaborate with the other government agencies, all of the groups of CDC to conduct inspection and to check whether or not they are really doing the business activity that they have declared to CDC. Can you give this committee a, a record na kayo po ay gumagawa ng pag-check, pag-bibisita dito sa 999 and then bigyan nyo po kami ng report kung ano po yung naging kalalabasan ng inyong ginawang pag-inspection kasi baka naman how show lang po ito na inspection ginagawa nyo. We will do that, Senator. We will submit po. So, how often do you do the uh, 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 inspect, me, inspection to your locators? Is this once a month, once a year, once a decade? Hindi po. Normally po, once a year yan when they renew their licenses. Pero would depend also kung ano ang mga issues ng locators that they need, that we need to inspect their... Why once a year? Why not every three months? Kasi in a year, marami na pong pwede mangyari. Kulad nito, eh, napabayaan, hindi ka nag-inspect after a year, eh, marami na pong na-traffic ng mga uh, foreign nationals. Senator Fee, uh, President CEO Devanadera is already online, so okay. you might also want to direct some of your questions to her for CDC. Yes. Um, is that uh, Attorney Chairman Devanadera? President Devanadera, uh, President. can we see you? Are you online already? Good morning. Yes. Good, morning, Good morning, President. Yes. Uh -oh. Good morning. Senator Rafi is uh, currently asking questions of CDC. We've been ha hearing from Attorney Meneses. Maybe you'd also like to field the questions from him. Please proceed. Okay. Uh, Madam President. Para, ano, President. <laughs> is, can I call you? Good morning, uh, po, Senator. CEO na lang, CEO. Uh, Good morning, CEO Divinadera. Uh, Good morning to you, Madam. Um, I would like to continue my line of questioning uh, doon sa pagtatawang kanina sa isa sa mga tao nyo. Uh, at yung manesis. Ay, namin niya po, nagkaroon po ng failure of intelligence, kaya po uh, magkakaroon daw kayong pagdidisiplina uh, uh, doon po sa mga nagkulang dito sa uh, sa Sunny, Sun Valley uh, raid ng PNP. 
Now, sabi ko, sabi niya, meron daw kayong 1,000 locators in Apo. CBC, right? So, Apo. yung 999 na locators, uh, kayo po ay gagawa ng pag-inspeksyon after this incident. Kasi meron ang nangyari, so of course, we're gonna do something to avoid uh, from happening this kind of problem, right? Ang sabi niya, once a year, ang suggest Chungko, bakit once a year? Bakit hindi quarterly? Kasi in a year, marami na pong pwede mangyari, marami na pong pwede ma-traffic, baka meron na yung sleeper cell dyan, eh baka lumawak na at uh, pwede nang gumawa ng uh, terroristic act, etc. So bakit hindi po natin gawing madalas? Bakit once a year? Uh, Mr. Sir, may I proceed? Yes, President CEO de Banader, please, please okay. answer the question. Okay. Uh, Senator Risa, uh, Senator Clusbo. Uh, well, the regular... And uh, Senator really Tolentino and Gachalian are also here. Oh, uh, Senator Gachalian and Senator Tolentino, good morning. Uh, the regular uh, inspection being done by our uh, law enforcement is really once a year because of the limited number of people. However, uh, it doesn't mean that for the rest of the year, they are not on beat patrol. In fact, our uh, our uh, standard uh, operating procedure, my standard operating procedure, with our uh, uh, in enforcing enforcers in Clark, who are not members of the PNP, is really to give me real time reports. So I get reports even in the evening about robbery, robbery, about traffic violation and all that. That means also they are being required to go around. Okay. Ma'am, uh, ma ma sorry. Makasing it. Okay. Ilan pong inspector meron po kayo? How many inspectors do you have? Uh, we have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we just have the about the maybe 30 plus, not 30 plus or uh, close to 50, uh, Your Honor. Okay, L let's say 30. So, Apa. yung 30 na yan, once a year lang po nag inspect Ah, uh, hindi naman po once a year lang. Kasi as I said, they go around. So, the regular on building permit, fire, uh, kasi kasama rin po yung fire. Uh, and then, uh, and the other uh, complaints, responding also to, to the complaints, uh, it's not just once a year. Kasi ma'am, if, if you do the math, so kung 30 sila, eh, sa loob ng 10 araw, eh, 300 na ma-inspect nila. So sa loob ng uh, one month, eh, aabuti na sila 900. So one month and a half, more than 1,000 na. So kung tutusin, kaya niyo pong gawin to quarterly. That was my point. Bakit po kinakailan patagalin pa, paabutin pa ng isang taon na kaya naman palang gawin uh, yung quarterly para mapigilan mangyari itong nangyari ngayon dito sa San Valley na kung saan PNP pa ang nakabulaga. Malaking kahiyan, malaking sampal po yan sa CDC. Dapat po kayo nakabulaga niyan na meron naman kayong uh, visitation power na anytime you can go in and visit and inspect which you didn't do. Yung PNP kailangan pang pumunta sa korte para kumuha ng search warrant at uh, magpakita ng mga evidence sa korte ba't kinakailang ma-search yung premises na yun. So, thank you PNP. Job well done sa PNP. Pero sa CDC, medyo malaking kahiya na ata ito, madam. Kasi kung ginawa niyo lang po trabaho yung CDC, hindi na po sana nangyari itong problema ngayon, hindi sana tayo nag-uusap ngayon. Uh, Mr. Senator, uh, we realize that, Mr. Senator, and that's the reason why we made an immediate action of uh, because our our monitoring with our law enforcers in CDC is quite close in the sense that I ask for reports not just quarterly but it's every day as I said they give me reports every day including the night time of things that they have monitored your honors uh, however I was just a surprise because there was no report on this. And that's the reason why, as mentioned by uh, Attorney Noelle, there, we concluded that there's a failure of intelligence 
And that's the reason why we placed on preventive suspension all officials of the law enforcer group in CDC, Your Honor. Uh, so moving forward, we, all, we are also doing an investigation. Now, on the other hand, Your Honors, uh, the uh, inspection would only re reveal what can be seen physically, Your Honor. And so I don't think even our law enforcers within Clark has that capability and sophistication to monitor uh, highly sophisticated and technical uh, incidents, Your Honor. So, Your Honor, CDC really uh, moved as fast. And we are also thankful that uh, PNP, with their, with their uh, uh, training for cybercrime, was able to detect this, Your Honor. So, so, so maybe... Listen, maybe Rafi and your colleagues, oh. just a, a time check. The chair would really like to try to make a hard stop by 12.30 okay, in an hour because of a following schedule. So following the question of Sen Rafi, okay. the chair would also like to ask and especially allow our other colleagues also to ask, especially Sen Sherwin, who is the author of one of our resolutions. Sen so Sen Rafi, that. yes. Okay, so therefore, kung make a capability on PNP para malaman... Uh, yung uh, isang company na gumagawa na pala ng cybercrime, gumagawa ng illegal, then maybe it train, mag, yung mga tao po ninyo, mag-train sa PNP. Opo. Tama po. So Opo. you should have done that long Alam. time ago. Uh, pero nakikipag-ugnayan naman po kami ma madalas kahit po sa iyakat regarding this, Your Honor. Okay. So Kailan po mag-train yung mga tao ninyo para malaman nila kung uh, paano ma-detect yung isang company na gumagawa na pala ng illegal. Is that what you're saying? Right. So you'll do that now, ma'am? Uh, yes, yes, your honors. And then, para mag, uh, I'll give way na lang, Madam Chair. Siguro sana gustong tanong yung pag kaya lang wala na palang oras. Sige. I'll, I'll yield to my colleagues. Yield to my colleagues. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Sen Rafi, for heeding the time check of the chair. But pubusin po natin yung isang oras. So baka ma, ma circle, maka circle back parin po tayo sa pagkor. Uh, salamat po. One follow up question to CDC, uh, President CEO De Vanadera. Uh, nung ocular inspection po natin, sinabi nyo that CDC doesn't condone scam hubs or any uh, illegal activities on your premises. Pero kahit yung cursory examination nga po ng mga job ads para sa scam hubs, alam nyo po yung mga, yung mga scam hubs kasi nakalagay na sa job description na with experience in dating sites and cryptocurrency. So it would show that many of the work sites are in Clark. Ay kasama na po dito nga yung Fontana, yung Clark Majestic. So tulad nung line of questioning ni Sen Rafi, hindi ba interesado yung CDC na tignan po yung iba pang mga ebidensya that point to these hubs. For example, dito po may ad for Clark Fontana. Uh, if a flash lang po natin. So ang requirement po nakalagay dito, knows how to use dating app. Eh, kailangan po ng dating app uh, <laughs> sa logo. Um, Madam Senator, as I yes, mentioned please. yesterday, and as I uh, candidly uh, replied to your to that issue, I said that personally, I don't go to those. I, I wasn't able to monitor because I don't go to those uh, sites, and uh, I'm not exactly uh, somebody who uh, looks into the social media. So. Uh, Personally, I, I, there's no way for me to have that uh, heads up uh, because I've not read that myself. And that's the reason now that uh, thinking that our law enforcers are more conscious about these things and that uh, this should be the scope of their intelligence gathering, that's the reason why Immediately, I place them on preventive suspension because I think they have filed my, they have failed management. Well, uh, thank you for that. Uh, 
President CEO De Vanadera. But of course, nung sinabi ko pong you, di ko naman ibig sabihin kayo lamang individually. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. CDC as a whole, at kayo nga po bilang yung pinaka-responsible uh, official there. Anyway, I'll leave that there for now. No? Na parang obviously naman, hindi kailangan marunong gumamit ng dating app para lang magtrabaho sa Pogo. That should already send off some alarm bells in the mind of CDC. So, uh, Sen. Sherwin, would you like to... Uh, post questions following the investigation of your uh, resolution and then San Francis too. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Yes, please. Uh, and thank you very much for hearing PS611. Uh, uh, this is the resolution to investigate the human trafficking incident in Clark, uh, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I just want to get some very basic preliminary information from uh, the different resource persons here, specific, specifically CDC. No, and I'll direct my question either to Attorney Meneses or to President De Manadera. Um, either one can answer. No? Um, I just want to get the basics. You know? Number one is, who is the lessee of this, uh, of this area? Um, Senator, we have a presentation, a one-slider. Would you like me to show that for Madam everyone's Chair, appreciation? Of course, if it's just one slide, please, uh, and so that just uh, to center show the different the corporations. Please do. Yes, uh, because it, there's so many names. There's Sun Valley Hub. There's Sun Valley Hub Corporation. There's Dong Wang. There's there's so many. Eh? So we just there's also the a basic. CGC Tech. There's center CGC in. Tech. There's Colorful Leaf. You no, know, all of these names. So we need to get the basics first, no, so that everyone will be on the same plane. So for everyone's information, we'll be presenting to you the chain of legal possession in so far as the issued lease agreement, the sublease agreements, and the personalities that were involved in the operations of the PNPACG. So Clark being the Freeport Management Authority, the one who manages, administers, and operates and develops the Clark Freeport Zone, leases the whole Clark Freeport zone. And as the less as the lesser, we have Dong Wang Clark Corporation. So that's the first corporation where we have a direct lease agreement with them in a th for a 300 hectare property for a 50 year term. Thereafter, this Dong Wang Clark Corporation, a CDC's locator, subleased a portion of it, which is 2.5 hectares in favor of Sun Valley Clark Hub Corporation. Now, the business activity of Sun Valley Clark Hub Corporation is to put up uh, rent out office and residential spaces in the Clark. And in fact, Sun Valley Clark Hub Corporation applied with the PAGCOR as a POGO hub, and they were able to get a PAGCOR license for this. Now, for the Sun Valley Clark Hub Corporation, they constructed eight buildings. And amongst the eight buildings, yung dalawang building, they sublist it again to CGC Technologies Incorporated. And that's around 14,320 square meters for a term of 10 years. Now, you can see there at the bottom, the Colorful and Leap Group Company. This is actually the respondent for the issued search warrants of Regional Trial Court Branch 81 of Bulacan. Sa records po ng CDC, hindi po lumilitaw ang Colorful and Leap Group Company. It shows that either hindi po inendorse either Sun Valley or CGC Technologies sa, DC, sa CDC ang Colorful and Leap Group Company. So dun po makikita na for Dong Wang, Sun Valley Clark Hub, and CGC Technologies, lahat po yan may kontrata, lahat din po yan na isuhan po ng business permit ng CDC. However, pagdating po dun sa Colorful and Leap Group Company, na siya pong respondent dun sa search warrants na na-issue, wala pong record sa amin yun, Senator. With the permission of the Chair. Yes, please, Senator. Uh, let, let's go one by one, no? itong slide na ito. Si Colorful Leap Colorful and Leap Group. May lease agreement siya with CGC? Wala po. Sa records po namin, wala po silang isinumuti. Uh, sa records nyo, but based on your investigation, based on the PNP's investigation, do they have any contractual agreement between CGC and Colorful and Leap? Based on the explanation of CGC Technologies, pinaupa daw po niya sa Color, 
and Leap Group Company. Based kanino? Sa explanation po na sinumuti ng CGC Technology sa CDC. Kasi po dahil nangyari to, nag-issue po kami ng cease and desist order tsaka notice to explain. Tinanong po namin, sino ba yung colorful na yan? Nung sumagot po sila, sinabi nila na lesi po nila si so on, colorful. So on record, sinabi ni CGC na lesi nila si colorful. Yes po. And based on your policy, do they need to report to uh, CDC? Yes po, Senator. Any Yes po. Any agreement. further subleasing should have been reported to so us. So it's, it's established that si CGC and Colorfully, meron silang business relationship. Yes po, They Senator. They know one another. Yes po, Senator. Okay. Si, you, nakita ko dito, no, based on your uh, land area, okay, mas maliit si CGC. Yes po. And you mentioned that CGC occupies two buildings. Yes po. Okay. Sa Sen Senator, if I can go to the next slide. Okay. Mas clear po doon. Para alam mo na yung tatanungin ko. Ano? Sige. Yan, yan yes. po, Senator. Yan, yan. Sige, go ahead. So, is you... Indulgence, the permission yes, please, Senator, when you have the floor. So, as you can see, Senator, we have the eight buildings. Yung naka-box po na red, yun po yung sinablis ni Sun Valley Clark Hub kay CGC Technologies. Yan po yung BPO1 and BPO2 or Office 1 and Office 2 po, kung tinatawag. So for the whole area, for the, those buildings inside the blue square, blue box, yan naman po yung buong area ni Sun Valley Clark Hub as a Pogo Hub with the license from Pogor. And for CGC naman po, they were able to secure the accreditation and authority to operate from the PAGCOR for Buildings 1 and 2, Senator. So let's again break it down one by one. So the whole blue box is Sun Valley. That's, that's documented. Yes, Senator. And then Sun Valley leased it to CGC. That's, that's Buildings C and E. Yes, Senator. Yun yung red box. Yes, po. And allegedly, they subleased it to Colorful and Leaf. According to CGC, Senator. According to them. No? Yes, that po. That testimony came from them. Yes, po. And that's duly recorded, That's correct? in their uh, letter of explanation, which they have submitted to us. So first, they violated your own rules because they didn't report uh, uh, the subleasing agreement. And then second... Yung nahuli, itong yung mga 1,127 1, 1, 1, po. 27 human traffic victims. Saan sila nakita? They were all scattered in the the residential area. Um, doon sa building na, 8 building na, where were they rescued? Um, Senator, the PNP can answer that insofar as the locations of the foreign nationals per building. Yes, okay. I'll ask Senator them later. Win, yeah. if I may. Yeah, uh, before we go to the PNP, on your question, na nakita po namin nung ocular inspection, na yung dorms, ang nakitira dun sa dorms ay yung scam hub traffic victims mismo. So, pati yung dorms, bahagi din ng operation, mm -hmm. Senator Win. Madam Chair and to Nang Sun uh, Valley Clark ah Senator Wayne. Yung door is that also the dorm? Kasi yes, po. the dorm. Yes, How do I know dorm yes, office? Po. Kasi when when Pagcor issues if you will allow me Pagcor issues the Pogo Hub license dapat one stop pop shop po yan eh parang it's all there you have the residential you have the BPO facility you have canteens restaurants laundry shop yeah, but but for, for this particular illustration they have the door, yan, yan eight buildings yan, dorms, offices, and other facilities yan. Yes po. But saan na rescue yung 1,000 plus victims based on the PNP report? Based on the PNP report, the... We'll ask PNP later on, but we'll, we'll ask... Oh. You know. They were rescued at, rescued at A, B, C, D, E, N, F. A, B... C, D, E, N, F po. N, F. Because these were the areas where the search warrants were implemented. So, and uh, then Sherwin, yeah. if I may just add to your line of questioning, therefore, since yung mga uh, human trafficking victims, scam hub, sapilitang scam hub operators were rescued during the raid, were rescued in the dorms, actually, Sen Sherwin, it seems CDC could file a case even against 
yung Sun Valley Clark kasi may kontrata ang Sun Valley Clark also for the dorms and Sherwin. Good point, uh, Madam Chair. So, doon sa letter C and E, merong na huling, merong na rescue yung traffic victims. Meron po. That's based due, on the list. Based on the police report. Based on the PNP list that they submitted. And that's po. confirmed. Opo. So, C and E, which is under officially sub-list to CGC. Yes po. So, in other words, in the building that CGC controls or or is leasing merong mga victims doon yes okay. po who has control over San Valley Clark and the CGC building who has per, uh, physical control of that of to itong if, San Valley Clark if we base it from the approvals and the submissions to CDC ideally it should be San Valley who's just operating the A B D F G and the dorm one and CGC being the sub lessee of San Valley should have operated by themselves office one and two. I'll break it down in, in simple terms. Ha. When I go there to the San Valley Clark, kaninong security guard din nandoon? I would suppose it would be from San Valley. No, but you're CDC. You should know. How will you how will you inspect if you don't know who controls Yes, it would the be the San Valley as the hub operator. So po. the San Valley controls the compound. Yes po. They have security guards. Yes. Pak pumunta rin kami doon eh. Now we had inspection also. In security guard nila nasa gate. Yes po. So you cannot go in without uh, the authorization of Sun Valley security guard. Yes po. Confirm yan. Yes po. Okay. Yesterday din po kasi when I was with the ocular team, I also heard them that the control of the security guards was with Sun Valley Clark okay. Hub po. In building C and D, who has control? In building C and E? Yes. CGC po. So my security guard si CGC doon? I would not tell if security guard or... But C building C out. and E, is that cordoned within hindi, the compound? Uh, hindi po. It's it's part of the compound eh. Wala mang pong harang. It's so just if you go an entry. Into the building, if you go in building C and E, whose security guards are there? I would think it's San Valley po. It's San Valley. Po. In that Parang isa, pala, isa lang po. Ang, because, Senator, all of their access pass, when we spoke with the PNP, it's all under San Valley. Okay. So, in in, in building C and E, uh, CGC is not in control of that building, in possession, control, securing that building? I cannot say, Senator. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so in your opinion, since they have control and they have possession, no, I heard you use legal possession of that area, tama? San, for San Valley. For San Valley, they have legal possession and control of that building. Hindi makakapasok yung mga biktima nang wala nilang authorization. Yes po. Hindi rin magkakaroon ng scam kung hindi nila, uh, uh, hindi rin magkakaroon ng scam kung pipigilin nila. Yes po. So in other words, alam nila lahat na nangyayari dyan. Based on the evidence, yes, sir. Alam po nila. They know the scam is happening in their premises because they control it. You cannot go in there without an ID, correct? Yes, po. So, alam nila yung scam na nangyayari doon? Yes, po. Alam nila na mayroong 1,000 plus human trafficking? trafficking yes, po. Building? Yes, po. Okay, alam nila doon? Yes, okay. po. Alam po ni San Valley. So, that's the second violation. They have control. They have legal possession. And yet, they allowed the operation of scamming in their premises as well as bringing in traffic victims yes senator that's your that's your um that's your uh, um analysis okay all right who owns san valley and cgc san valley muna um, natin if i may i i have the gis who representative who owns nicola ma i i don't know so for Sun Valley Clark Hub, based on the submitted GIS, the president is Kevin Christopher Wong, Senator. Okay. If you will allow me to read the other directors. Okay. Sun Valley muna and then let's go to CGC because it's established that they control the premises. It's established that they have legal possession of the premises. So now who are the personalities For behind? the Sun Valley, Senator, for the declared president, it's Kevin Christopher K. Wong. The treasurer is Kimberly Claire K. Wong. 
The corporate secretary is Lance Rydell C. Chu. And then the other directors are Ziyang Huang and Ding Kai Wang, Senator. Okay. Who owns CGC? Senator, if I may read again the GIS book. With the permission of the chair, of course. Yes, please proceed. For CGC Technologies, the president is Kevin Christopher K. Wong. The corporate treasurer is Lance Rydell Chu. The corporate secretary is Hanifa D. Bedar. And the other directors are Kimberly Claire K. Wong, Catherine Crizel K. Wong, and Perry Neil Lee, Senator. So the owners of Sun Valley and CGC are the same? Uh, my interlocking directors, po, but not exactly the same. So who's Senator. the president of Sun Valley? Uh, it's uh, Christopher Kevin Wong. Who's the president of CGC? It's Christopher Kevin Wong. So it's the same person? Yes, po. So um, I, I don't have the breakdown of the shareholdings, but it seems to me that the, the personalities behind Sun Valley, Clark, and CGC are one and the same. Correct? Yes, Senator. Okay, and... Uh, in other words, the personalities behind, uh, since they have operational, they have security control of that area, will know what's happening within their premises. Yes, Senator. Tama. Opo. Have you talked to the owners? Sa side po namin, hindi po. So who did you interview? The lawyers? Nila. No, for the explanation. We yes. just, it's all in writing, Senator, okay. when we wrote them. Who, uh, was, who was writing you? Um, it was Christopher. One of the signatories was Christopher. Let me check on the record, Senator. So who's on record communicating with CDC? Uh, Senator, I just don't have the letters that they sent. But if I, I, if my memory serves me right, one of the signatories for the CGC was uh, Christopher. So it's the owners uh, or the president of the company. But it was not the president who signed, Senator. It who was a director. It was a director. Yes, po. Which one? Uh, anyways, uh, just, was, submit, just submit. Just submit, po. Yeah, Madam Chair, if. Your permission, can we request CDC to submit to us all yes, communication, per pertinent documents related to this topic? Yes, and with the permission please do so, uh, Attorney Meneses. And then, yes, and Francis. Permission of Senator Gachalian. Perhaps the yes, Securities please. and Exchange Commission should likewise uh, validate any submission coming from the CDC as to the corporate papers oh, and, oh. The, and to the interlocking board of directors you just mentioned. Yes, Senator. We so, will Comsec, submit. Thank you, Attorney Meneses. Comsec, please note, uh, once the committee receives the documents from the CDC, uh, to please have these validated by the SEC, as requested by Sen. Tolentino. Yes, please proceed, Sen. Sherwin. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I would like to direct my question to the PNP, who, uh, uh, who was involved. I know the PNP has several agencies, but I believe it's the anti-cyber crime group. Uh, Sino po yung involved dito sa, dito sa operations? General Ernia, please respond. Uh, magandang umaga po, uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Wynn, at Salian. Uh, ako po si Police Brigadier General Sidney Hernia, uh, pinuno po ng uh, anti-cyber crime group. Uh, the lead unit po dito sa operations is yung aming unit po, the anti-cyber crime group. And uh, we were supported uh, by the Special Action Force, the Intelligence Group, and the uh, Highway Patrol Group. But basically, the, the most number of personnel came from the uh, uh, Special Action Force. Because during these operations, we generated more than 400 personnel for these operations. General, I just want to ask you, based dito sa illustration sa board, no? may walong building ho dyan. Saan yung hunahuli yung mga human traffic victims? Uh, upon our arrival at the, at the uh, site, uh, your honors, uh, dito po sa building C and E, 
uh, dyan po yung actual operations nung uh, company. So nahuli po natin yung mga tao dyan. Nakita natin dyan. They were actually... Uh, dyan po mismo sa building C and E, uh, naabutan po ng ating mga raiding teams, no, uh, red-handed in flagrante delicto po, na ando sa mga computers lahat ng mga mga tao. So, halos karamihan po dito, dyan po sa building C and E. But there were others uh, who were rescued in other buildings, especially dito sa building F. Andyan po yung mga resigning members eh ng uh, kumpanya, yung mga nagtatrabaho na gusto na mag-resign, andyan po sa Building F. And Nasa some of the rooms ba, General? Wala po kami nakita po sa dark. Okay, please proceed. And there were some who were in buildings A and B, doon sa mga dormitories. Uh, maybe they were on off-duty, kaya andun sila. But uh, majority of them ay nakita po natin dito sa Building uh, C and E. Nung pumunta ko kayo doon, General, uh, obviously may security guard, no? Yes, Tama? General, yes. Sino po yung uh, security, kanino, kaninong security guard po yung nasa gate? Uh, Did you get the name and the company have, and who are they representing? Uh, ang pangalan po ng uh, security agency is Delta 4. Okay, sino so, ang kliyente nila? Obviously, agency lang sila eh. Sino uh, po ang nagbabayad do sa kanila? Uh, Your Honors, hindi pa po namin na kumpleto investigation but we have requested yung ating uh, sosya. Sila po yung uh, office na PNP which is directly responsible sa documents dito sa agency. So hinihintay pa namin yung mga documents na ibibigay sa amin. But sa ngayon, ang uh, nasa amin is the name of the agency which is uh, Delta 4. Doon ba sa building C and E, meron bang security guard do doon? Uh, All build, uh, doon sa building C and E, meron pong mga gwardiya po doon uh, sa lobby. And then doon sa main gate, andun din po yung bulk ng uh, uh, numbers of guards na andun sa, sa gate. Isa lang ba ang agency for the entire compound? Nag-iisa lang po. Isang agency. Delta 4 lang po. Delta 4. Delta 4. Uh, General, can you please submit to the committee the contract, the most recent contract? of that uh, security agency pertaining to this compound. The security Please agency general. representing someone. No? Obviously, they're representing Sun Valley or CGC. But we want to determine on record who are who is their official client. Uh, we will do that, Your Honor. Uh, pakisabit na lang po sa amin. And lastly, Madam Chair, with your permission yes, to, 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 to PAGCOR, Uh, uh, Sir Sherwin, if you don't mind, before we leave the yes, General yes. Earn, just one uh, question, General, para sa PNP. Uh, hindi particular dito sa Sun Valley, pero tungkol sa isa pang site na earlier na identify ng isa ring Indonesian victim survivor, uh, yun pong sa um, uh, Bayport na iya West Residences. Kasi kanina sinabi din po ni Yusekti bukod sa Clark, paranyake yung isang isang scam hub hotspot. So, what about po those scam hubs in Paranaque? Alam ko po, hanggang ngayon daw, nagre-recruit pa rin sila uh, dun sa Bayport na Ia West Residences. At yung ad na ipapakita ko mabilis, uh, literally May 28, kahapon lang, uh, nagaano pa rin sila. Ito po ba ay uh, maano na rin po uh, mabibigyan ng karampatang law enforcement attention ng PNP? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, yung doon po sa Bayport, wala po kaming na-conduct na, na police operations doon. Uh, but I heard, uh, I think PAGCOR made, a, made an inspection of that area. And uh, we're not part of that uh, inspection. Now, uh, dito po sa ibang mga reported, uh, allegedly, uh, meron daw mga scam. Uh, ongoing po yung aming mga surveillance activities and uh, as soon as we, we get the uh, necessary information and uh, we can, uh, or that information is enough, 
for us to file a search warrant, then uh, those uh, those uh, companies will be the subject of our police operations. Po. Salamat, General Ernia. We actually, the committee actually provided the information we had on the Bayport na Ia West residences to the NBI and also to the PNP. So, mag-follow up na lang po siguro yung committee sa PNP if you can also take appropriate action vis-a-vis uh, -vis Bayport uh, na Ia West residences. So, back to you, Senator Sherwin, for your questions uh, for PAGPOR. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Senator Risa. Senator Risa, uh, in the interest of fairness, no, uh, may I know if C CGC and San Valley and their representatives were invited to the hearing? We did not. The committee did not invite them, Sen. Sherwin, but I, we may do so in the next yeah, hearing. I, I, may I request that uh, the uh, representatives, the owners, and the personalities behind the San Valley, um, the official name is San Valley... Sun Valley Clark Hub Corporation yes. no? and CGC Technology Incorporated be invited to the next hearing, madam. Comsec, Here. let's please do that. Thank we'll you. do uh, censure. To Pagcor, um, ngayon lang ako nakarinig ng Pogo Hub na ina-accredit. I know, I thought Pogo Hub is a concept. No, uh, I've heard some people talk about it, but now ina-accredit ang Pogo Hub. Pakigamit po yung mic para marinig namin boses niyo, ma'am. Attorney Jess uh, Fernandez. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. That is true, Mr. Chair. Under the Offshore Gaming Regulatory Manual, there is an accreditation for what we call a POGO hub. The concept of a POGO hub is that it should be a complex wherein there will be offices and the offices and then dormitories, convenience stores, everything that the workers will be needing inside the compound, inside the hub. Um, ideally, it should also have the offices of government agencies that are supposed to be uh, usually needed by the uh, workers. Example, the Department of Labor and Employment or the Bureau of Immigration or the BIR. However, at present, the Sun Valley Clark Hub Corporation did not have those offices inside their uh, the complex. Since when did you accredit Pogo Hubs? When did this accreditation start? It started in 2018, Mr. In Chair. In 2018. How many Pogo Hubs have you accredited? Two, Mr. Chair. Where, where's, where are those? Uh, the one is in Sun Valley Clark Hub Corp. The one is Sun Valley Clark Hub Corporation, located in Mabalakat, Pampanga, and the other one is the uh, the one located in Island Cove, the First Orient uh, Corporation. Okay. Do they put any bond, any security, anything that will guarantee compliance to their? Um, mandates? Unfortunately, Mr. Chair, based on the manual, there is no bond required from so walang bond. And hubs. Are they, I don't know, I don't have the regulation for your Pogo Hub, no, because the, this is the first time um, I've heard of such. But under the agreement, no, I, I, I assume there's an agreement between Pagcor and the operator of the Pogo Hub, correct? Who? Tama? Uh, Antonio, you yes, sir. Peace, yes, sir. Kasi hindi mare-record po eh. Um, who maintains peace and order? The peace and order, sir, should be uh, the responsibility of the uh, hub because That's they should... specified in the agreement? Actually, no, sir. So how, what, is, what is specified in the agreement? Um, there's no actually mention of the peace and order uh, with regard to the agreement with the hub. In the agreement, the, is it specified the control of the premises? Who no, Mr. Chair. So, wala rin, wala rin yun. Okay. And then, uh, you mentioned that government agencies should be present. Is that in the agreement? Uh, actually, under the rules, it's um, ideal that uh, the agencies will be given offices inside the. So is it mandated or is it ideal? Encourage. You know, different to eh. Actually, sir, it should be required. However, uh, we have yet to... Uh, so it's required under yes. your own rules, yes. correct? Yes. It's a prerequisite. 
it's not actually a prerequisite, but during the uh, the duration of the agreement, there should be an agreement with the government agencies to locate inside the hub, sir. Okay. Who, and who facilitates the location of the government agencies there? Actually, it should be the the hubs should be coordinating with the agency so that they will be able to locate inside the premises. Okay. okay. Yes. So who, who facilitates? Who goes to, let's say, I would assume Bureau of Immigration, diba? and tell them, oh, punta naman kayo dito, you set up an offer. Who, who does that? Is it PAGO or them? Uh, who, who's the responsibility? Who's responsible? That's my point. Um, based on the uh, what happened in the past, sir, the uh, the owner of the hubs were directed to coordinate with the government agencies uh, through uh, with the support from PAGCOR, Mr. Okay, Chair. so it's the responsibility of the owner. Sir. Owner, it's, it's yes, specified sir. in the contract. Yes, sir. Okay, um, how many agencies should be located in that area in the hubs? Uh, sir, let me just check with the man. PNC, sir. one of them. No, sir. PNP is not one of them? No, sir. NBI, is it? Uh, let me just check which agency, sir. Let I just identify now. Okay, so okay. Well, they're getting the, um, the, the data on which agencies. In these two accredited POGO hub that you um, mentioned, are there government offices inside the premises already? None, sir. So, wala. Is that a violation of the contract between PAGCOR? Yes, sir. It's a violation. So, kung walang government offices doon, they violate the POGO hub contract with PAGCOR? Yes, sir. Okay. E dalawa, wasabi mo, wala. So, what happens next? Actually, sir, the Sun Valley Clark Hub Corporation accreditation was already cancelled. Uh, with regard to the first orient, sir, uh, we are already conducting investigation on the project implementation plan on how do they um, on the timeline that they have given us to coordinate with the agencies to locate in their uh, in their area sir so have they violated the timeline sir we have yet to um, conduct the to finish the investigation sir with regard when to was the that contract orient. consummated uh, in the accreditation was given in 2019, sir. In 2019, yes. ano na ngayon? 20. Yes, na. sir. So the accreditation that we have actually given them is just provisional. So the accreditation will only become um, regular, or it will just not be provisional if they have already complied with all of the requirements provided under the offshore game offshore game yeah, regulatory. Yeah, but it's already four years. And Sen Sherwin, I noted in their slide, the provisional accreditation is still 2029. So hindi naman sana maghihintay ng anim na taon pa bago makumpleto, Sen Sherwin. I agree, Mr. Chair. So, kayo nagbigay ng contract, kayo nag-specify na dapat may government agency, pero hindi niyo in-enforce. 2019 pa ito eh. Tama? Yes, Mr. Chair. Ba't niyo in-enforce? Actually, sir, uh, we are already following up the implementation yeah, the, the, the of this. Follow up, obviously, the following up is nothing. No, it's ending up nothing. But I mean, it's nothing. Nothing is happening. Correct. I mean, you've been following up since two thousand nineteen. It's already four years, so it's going nowhere. So, wala bang wala ba kayong drastic action na gagawin? Mr. Chair, dito po sa First Orient, uh, mapagbalik ko po, gagawa na po ka ng drastic action para po mapwersa po natin sila na magkaso. How many times have you inspected si San Valley and si, uh, what's the name of the other one? First Orient. First Mr. Orient. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I refer you to our monitoring team, sir? Uh -huh. When's, how many times do you inspect that? Uh, uh, we inspect it, sir. Uh, sir, sorry, you I, are attorney. I, uh, I am uh, uh, you... general. I'm sorry, general. Rowan, can I have a Please, uh, sir. Uh, senior Vice President for Monitoring and and uh, for Security and Monitoring Cluster of Pagcor. It's a new officer. Uh, we inspect the the place uh, twice a week, sir. Unain muna natin si First Orient. How many times do you inspect the place? Uh, it's what is in your rule, in your guidelines? 
How many times do you have to inspect the place? We have to inspect it to twice a week, sir. Twice a week. Because we have very limited personnel. and uh, yeah, But you only have two Pogo hubs. Yes, sir. So you don't have to monitor so yes. many things, sir. Yes, sir. Only two Pogo hubs. So how many times... In your regulation, huh? how many times do you need to inspect? Twice a week? Twice a week, sir. So itong si First Orient, since 2019, twice a week nyo dapat ini-inspect? Yes, sir. Nasaan na yung mga government offices? And, sir. Kung twice a week nyo ini-inspect yes, siya? Yeah. Al alam nyo yung PAGCOR, pinaglolokon nyo kami, to be honest about it. Eh. That's why we're all in this in this problem. Hindi nyo ginagawa yung trabaho ninyo eh. You said twice a week nyo inspect Pero hanggang ngayon, wala pa rin government offices. Si Sun Valley, how many times did you inspect? It's the same, sir. Twice a week nyo inspect pero yes, may 1,100 human traffic victims doon? Yes, sir. Anong klaseng uh, inspection ginawa nyo? Uh, apparently, sir, there was uh, some... Uh, some problem with our uh, monitoring team, sir. Uh, What's the problem with your monitoring medyo, uh, team? Ito din. Nakorap. Kulang din ng ano to, to sir. Mga nabulag sila. Uh, the last time that it was inspected, sir, before the raid. It was last uh, April But 28. you said twice a week you need to inspect. Yes, there are only two Pogo hubs in the whole Philippines, yes, ah. And you need to inspect it twice. Yes. So paano nangyari itong 1,100 plus human traffic victims nakalampas sa inspectors ninyo? Uh, palagay ko sir, kasi very sophisticated na rin itong mga syndicates ngayon, sir. Paano magiging sophisticated? The, the buildings are there, identified ng CDC yes, buildings. Pag pumunta kayo doon, what type of inspection do you do? You do? Yes, You're pag or Usually, sir, ang ini-inspect kasi nila, sir, yung dun sa dalawang building lang, sir, one, one and two. And then, actually, we required them to report the report their inspection and take some pictures, sir. May mga pictures tayo yeah, dun, but sir. but you said, okay, when did, when did itong Sun Valley, when was it accredited? By PAGCOR? 2019. January 15, 2019. Saka, Senator may problem ang monitoring ng PAGCOR, may problem ang monitoring ng CDC. So, saan so tayo pupulutin magiging trafficking haven na lang? No? So, ano yes, na sir. po? Senator Wynn. Uh, January 15, 2019, sir. January 15, 2019 rin. Twice a week kayo nag inspect Yes, sir. Pero meron 1,160 plus human traffic there. Paano nangyari yun? Can you explain to us paano nangyari yun, PAGCOR? Uh, um, And why we should not abolish PAGCOR? Uh, actually, sir, uh, the, the latest inspection, sir, was April 28th. So, April 28 of 2023. Okay. Before the raid, sir. Oh. And uh, during the inspection, wala naman sila nakita, sir, na irregularities at that time. Pa pa so, Paano kasi, nangyari? Yung police may nakita, yung CDC may yes, nakita, yung PAGCOR na nagbigay ng lisensya, walang nakita. Yes, sir. Obviously, nakorap yung mga inspectors nyo. Yes, sir. Obviously, kayo, hindi nyo rin ginagawa trabaho ninyo because in your regulation, Government offices should be there. Kasali ba dyan dapat Bureau of Immigration? Sa required offices? Actually, sir, upon verification, there's no specified agency, but it should have partner government and law enforcement agencies. Ano, ano? Can you repeat that? Partner government and law enforcement okay. agencies. Is the PNP, attorney, answer this. Is the PNP a law enforcement agency? Yes, Mr. Chair. Is the BI a law enforcement agency? Yes, Mr. Chair. Should they be inside the Pogo Hub? Yes, Mr. Chair. And ba sila? Wala po, Mr. Chair. Since 2019? Yes, Mr. Chair. Kung nandun ang PNP and BI, will this human trafficking incident happen? There is a very low possibility that this will happen. Since you didn't enforce your own regulation, Sino ngayon ang may responsibilidad? Pagcor, Mr. Chair. So anong dapat na anong dapat uh, gawin namin sa Pagcor because of this? 
I think, sir, there should just be, uh, there should be, uh, we should, we should be the one to improve our regulations as well as our monitoring. Uh, gaya nga po ng uh, nasabi ng mga kasama natin dito, nung nangyari pong event ito, or even before Bottom this line, happens, attorney, sir, you can give us a million and one reasons. Bottom line, PAGCOR is corrupt. Nakorrupt kayo. Hindi nyo ginagawa yung trabaho ninyo. Pinikit nyo yung mata ninyo, pinikit nyo yung inspectors, mata ng mga inspectors ninyo, hindi nyo sila pinakomply. Ang tanong, bakit treat them with special, why is it being given a special treatment? 2019, it's already four years. Actually, sir, hindi naman po, 2019, nagsimula ang kanilang operations. So, Whatever, whether is... it's 2019, it's one year, twice a week kayo nag inspect Twice a week niyo alam mo lang enforce law enforcement agencies diyan. Twice a week kayong pumupunta diyan physically. And you tell me din see 1160 plus different nationalities being trafficked in that area. Ang tanong ko sa inyo, with this incident, is the Pogo Hub still a viable option? Tanong ko sa iyo, attorney. I think, Mr. Sherry, it will only be viable if the government agencies and law enforcement agencies will yeah, be there. When PAGCOR is corrupt, do you still think that the Pogo Hub concept will be effective for the country? Yes, Mr. Sher, as long as the regulations will be properly yeah, enforced but inside. Enforce the regulation, eh? We will enforce, Mr. Sher. After nangyari na ito, alam, alam nyo, to be honest about it, this brings international shame to us. The Philippines is becoming a scam hub, hindi Pogo hub, a scam hub. Pogo being used as front for scams. Pogo's being used as front for human trafficking. Because PAGCOR is corrupt and not doing its job. That's the bottom line. Pinagloloko nyo kami. Imposible. If twice a week in inspection ninyo, imposible ang hindi nyo makikita yan. Just put PNP and BI dyan. Wala na tayong problema ngayon. Why take four years of inaction? That's why I don't believe in this. Kahit anong sabihin ninyo, if you are corrupt, kahit Pogo Hub pa yan, or whatever concept you, you want to develop, it's not gonna work because PAGCOR is corrupt. Ang nanggaling sa'yo ni information. I don't have any previous information. All of that came from you. In twice a week, in regulation, in inspection. Not, hindi ka man galing sa akin yan. Galing sa inyo lahat yan. In any case, ma Madam Chair, uh, uh, Pagcor, please submit to us all the documents regarding Pogo Hubs, your regulation, uh, all the inspection reports. Submit to us so we can analyze that. And specifically, Sen. Sherwin, uh, in terms of the information about the Pogo Hubs, please submit an updated list of the licensed Pogos and also the Pogo service providers. Will do, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. Thank you, Sen. Sherwin. Sen. Francis, do you want to Just raise a few a... questions? Sir. Yes, please. And then the Chair will also raise the last few questions to um, alias uh, Jason and then also finally to the uh, International Organization of Migration for our regional perspective. San Francis. Thank you, Madam Chair. Balikan ko yung uh, IA, IACAT. You confirmed a while ago during my uh, earlier questioning that there was, there were instances of recruited victims, rescued victims coming back going back abroad to be rescued again. And I'm asking you for a record. Has there been an instance of victims rescued here, Philippine soil, who were repatriated, who eventually returned to the Philippines willingly or unwillingly? Do, do we have records coming from the BID or can the IACAT uh, furnish us some data? Uh, we don't have that data yet, Mr. Senator, but we can... We can it's we can the reverse. Yes, sir. So is it possible that uh, 
some of the victims, the names uh, we're trying to validate were previously repatriated. I, sir, um, the previous practice of BI when it comes to these these foreign nationals is to actually deport them. And if they're deported, they're blacklisted and they won't be able to come back. But for this group... Perhaps we, using a different passport, uh, another name. Yes. For this group, what the BI did is that on the allowed departure order, there's actually a statement there that they are classified as trafficking victims. And this will be on their record so that if they attempt to come back, it will be flagged that they are they were previously repatriated as trafficking victims and we can we can deal with them appropriately. But if they use another uh, travel document, is it possible? Yes. Commissioner Tansinko, would you like to address the question? We have we have actually experiences uh, not not traffic victims, but uh, foreign nationals using different passports, different names. But uh, we same can same person, same person. But we can detect they them. Lead, uh, red flag. Yes. Returning to the Philippines under another name. Another name, another passport. We can uh, detect uh, through facial recognition. Yeah. That's a new technology. So yes, Your Honor. You, you confirm that it can happen. It can happen, Your Honor. Earlier, Senator Gachalian asked about the accreditation of the Pogo firm. When was this cancelled? Pardon, Mr. Chair. When was this cancelled, the accreditation? The, of CGC, Mr. Chair. Yes, yes. Um, on May 18, 2023, Mr. Chair. Yes, this month. Yes, sir. On what grounds? Yeah, uh, on the ground of their involvement in criminal activities, Mr. Chair. And then, of course, there was a, a semblance of a hearing made, uh, paper submitted, and a final determination made by PAGCOR. Yes, to Mr. Chair. The cancellation of the accreditation. Yes, Mr. Chair. And then earlier, uh, General Villanueva mentioned when asked by Senator Gachalian that they conduct uh, inspections twice a week. Uh, are these reports furnished the CDC? Oh. Perhaps I can ask the CDC. Are you aware of the uh, inspection reports? No, that? Senator. St. Francis, maybe President CEO De Venadera is also still online. Uh, President Agnes De Venadera? Yes, uh, Your Honor. We are not so, aware of... Uh, but are, are, are you aware of a practice being done by PAGCOR that they inspect? Because they, they, en they, enter PAGCOR, they enter CDC premises and perhaps uh, your security forces or team would detect that there is a PAGCOR visitorial team conducting inspection. Uh, is this not being reported to your office? Uh, sir, we don't have any report of that sort, Your Honor. San Francis, maybe we could also ask our, our record, Your Honor. So maybe we could also ask uh, alias uh, Jason, one of our victim survivors, yes. what the company would do when PAGCOR would enter the premises. Yes, I, I, I still would like to pursue another question. Right. Please proceed, San Francis. Uh, Pagkor, do you furnish CDC a copy of your inspection report? No, sir. Siguro dapat yun na yung gawin. We'll do that. Para then. matapos na. Kasi yes, kulang ang taon CDC, i-furnish nyo lang sila, yes, tapos. Di ba? Yes, sir. We'll do that, sir. It's a matter of coordination. Mas madali pa yun. So, in effect, you will be an extension of the inspection arm of CDC. Uh, Madam Chair, you have a question to be addressed to... St. Francis, yes. Um... Jason, before I pursue my other line of question. Yes, of course. What would the company do whenever PAGCOR would conduct its inspections? Did you notice? So, uh, when I work there, uh, the inspection is only once a week. And only, as, as I'm not mistaken, only in Tuesday or in Wednesday, once a week. And then uh, the company will give us signal in in the speaker if the chinese song uh play it's uh the sign that the park store will will inspect and then half of us will hiding in the dorm and uh close all the curtain and lock uh the dorm door 
and we are not allowed to, you know, uh, like a sound, make a sound or voice or something. Thank you. Terima kasih, Jason. So St. Francis, there would be a code Chinese song to warn them, half of them, to hide in the dorms. And probably also St. Sherwin, that's why when the inspection was done, not even twice a week, uh, St. Francis, but once a week, Tuesday or Wednesday, probably that's why when the inspection would happen, somehow they didn't see all those human trafficking victims. Back to you, St. Francis. Uh, General Villanueva, nung pag nag kasama ka ba sa inspection team? No, sir. Ay, we have... Uh, Pagcore monitoring teams. Yung pagcore monitoring team mo, nagre-report sa'yo? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nakakarinig daw sila ng songs. Uh, kaya wala nakikita. You know, I'll, but, I'll check, sir, but uh, I haven't uh, heard uh, from them, sir, about it. Sir. Ah, wala naririnig? None, sir. So you you deny the the playing of songs? Baka naman naka-headset yung mga tao mo. Uh, I'll check, sir. Just, just kidding, but... Uh, and St. Francis, so maybe there was a tipster inside who knew that Pagor would inspect. Kasi paano nila alam? Paano sila makatugtog nung code Chinese Madam song Chair, ngayon? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, we level. suspect that also, sir. Uh, medyo malakas din ang network nito, sir. Uh, Ma'am, in uh, last 26 uh, you, You're May, responding to my query yes, or to the query of the chair? The query of the chair, sir. Okay. Uh, last May 26, sir, we, together with uh, other government agencies, law, law enforcement agencies, we launched the Oplan Bay Watch, uh, targeting Tribes Technology Corporation. Is that the one in pa in Paranaque, General yes, sir. Nueva? In Bay Watch, uh, in Bay, yeah, Bayport West, na IA Residences Tower Four, specifically in Barangay Tambo, Paranaque, sir. Yung nakita namin dun, sir, I personally uh, supervise the operation because uh, it, it, it was a PAGCOR-led uh, interagency operation to inspect uh, tribes, uh, technology corporation, because we suspected already. We have some reports from our PAGCOR monitoring teams about... Uh, Cryptocurrency is coming, sir, and the labs come. This, it's the same platform, sir, ng nasa Sun Valley. Parehas na parehas siya, ma'am. Ang problema lang, pagdating namin dun, ma'am, wala na yung mga computers. Bakit may tumutuloy ng computers, Chinese sir. code song dun? Uh -oh. Pero marami silang naiwan. At saka yung mga foreigners, about 102 of them, are missing already. Pero may mga naiwan pa silang mga evidences. Yung mga vault, yung mga money counter, including... Uh, thousands of uh, SIM cards yung ginagamit nila at saka mga cell phones, ma'am. General, did the vaults also contain cold cash katulad dito po sa Most club? likely, ma'am. And may mga studio din, ma'am. And uh, other things. Parehas na parehas. Yes, yes, ma'am. So, um, so, we immediately canceled, uh, no, suspended the uh, uh, tribes uh, technology corporation. And we're coordinating now with the BI and uh, for the whereabouts of the 102 foreigners and including with the DOJ for the uh, uh, filing of appropriate uh, criminal charges uh, to the management of Tribes Technology Corporation. Thank you, General. San Francis, you still have the floor. Yes. Uh, kanina po may nabanggit na colorful lip. Ano po yung, uh, ma'am, CDC, ano po yung colorful lip? Um, um, this is the alleged um, corporation operating in Clark, Senator, pero sila po yung nakalagay sa search warrant as the respondent. And uh, are you familiar with the uh, corporate personalities? Wala po kaming record, Senator, sa Colorful and Leap Group Company. When Pagcor made the inspection, ano sino in-inspect nyo? Colorful Leap ba? O... Kasi yung dalawang building, colorful lip eh. The CGC company, sir. Not the colorful. Kasi hindi naman registered sa amin yan. And we do not know anything about the colorful, colorful company. Colorful lip po, ganun katagal na nag-ooperate. We have no record, Senator. Pero for CGC, they start... Nakasama sa diagram niyo. Opo. Kaya po broken line siya. Kasi po, wala siya talagang personality sa CDC. Na-determine na merong colorful lip. Yun po kasi yung nakalagay sa search warrants na ginamit po ng PNP, Senator. So can we ask the PNP? Uh, the source of colorful lip? General uh, Hernia, please. 
Yes, uh, yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, uh, Senator Tolentino. Yes, sir. Uh, in the application of our search, uh, search warrant, we got information from uh, our uh, informants, and uh, those informants actually, or the information that we got actually, came from inside the hub, and they were talking about Colorful and Lip Company. So when we apply for the search warrant, uh, we use the name Colorful and Lip Company because those inside told us that they were employed by Colorful and Lip Company. So, no records, but just the same, the judge issued a warrant uh, describing the premises as under the control of Colorful Lip. Kahit hindi wala, hindi nagpunta kayo sa SEC kung sino itong Colorful Lip. Just ah, oh, magkaiba ba yun? Magkaiba si Colorful at si Lip. Lip, yes, ba? Lip uh, yes, dahon o tumalon? No, Lip tumalon. na talon talaga. L-E-A-P. So, dalawa, -E dalawang kumpanya. Yes, no. So nag, nagpunta po kayo sa SEC? Uh, after the operations na, Your Honor, we requested uh, from SEC. Uh, Meron. We inquire about uh, Colorful and uh, Lip. Lip. So... Uh, Leaf has no uh, legal uh, identity, okay. but for Colorful... Uh, so there is a the Colorful got, Corporation? Yes, we got the document, but it is not yet authenticated. But, but uh, for the records, uh, you can divulge to this committee with the permission of the chair. Sino yung Colorful? Please proceed. Uh, colorful. Uh, the... Uh, <laughs> incorporators of this uh, colorful group consist of two uh, Taiwanese and uh, three uh, Filipinos, Your Honor. Can you name them? Because uh, that's part of the records, official records emanating from the Securities and Exchange Commission. Uh, Your Honor, this is not yet an authenticated copy. We're, we are requesting for a, Kaya nga an authenticated dito. copy. Okay. So maybe so, we can ask uh, Your Honor the Can SAC? you show it to me? So to this committee uh, with the uh, general, please uh, show it to the and committee. to the to the chairperson. And reassuring San Francis, we will invite the SEC to the next hearing. Uh, Madam Chair, that this representation was shown a copy of a SEC document uh, attributed to the Articles of Incorporation of Colorful Lip Technologies. Uh, so nakita ko po, iba naman yung pangalan. So C CDC, sa inyong pagkakaalam po, ganun katagal na nandoon sa compound si Colorful? Iba pa pala yung lip. President CEO de Banadera, are you online? In fact, uh, Your Honor, that uh, we don't really have a record of this uh, colorful and leaf. It is uh, difficult to venture into an answer as to when they are in operation. However, for CGC Technologies, since they registered in, uh, with us and their sub lease with the San Juan Char Club has been approved, that's the thing that we can be certain of. Your Honor. Thank you. But uh, I, I think, uh, ma'am, as former, thank you, DOJ. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Solicitor General. Yes, Your Honor. E ERC. Yes, Your uh, Honor. <laughs> do you confirm, ma'am, that even without the existence of a written lease agreement or a sub-lease agreement, under Article 1403 of the Philippine Civil Code, there is a valid lease contract if it is not more than one year. Your Honor, uh, the, uh, on the question of uh, whether we are aware of the operation of the colorful leaf, that is something that we cannot venture into because uh, we did not receive any report even from our uh, police uh, of Clark, and that's the reason why, Your Honor, uh, we place them under preventive suspension 
and they are under investigation uh, why this was not at all reported to management, Your Honor. I think, uh, Your Honor, uh, Madam Chair, it's just a matter of uh, not just lack of intelligence, but proper coordination between several government agencies. PAGCOR, for instance, doing its weekly inspection uh, near the offices of CDC. This should, this, should, this should bring forth a more collaborative uh, security team assessment. Kung nagtutulungan lang po kayo, siguro mas ma, mas sa atin po sa Batangas, uh, uh, President De Binadera, mas maalwan ang, uh, uh, ang nangyari. So, Madam Chair, wala na po akong karagdagang katanungan. Ang gusto ko lang makita po sa IACAT, ilan yung datos natin na na-rescue dati sa ibang bansa, na bumalik uli sa ibang bansa. Ilan naman yung datos natin na na rescue sa Pilipinas, din report sa ibang bansa, bumalik uli sa Pilipinas. Kasi yung iba niloloko na tayo eh, hino hotel natin, pinapakain natin, tapos babalik uli doon. So you secti please provide the committee that information at the next hearing. Yes, Madam Chair, we will. Thank you. So Madam Chair. Salamat, San Francis. Just lastly and succinctly, I'd like to ask a few questions to the International Organization of Migration, who will speak for IOM. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Tristan Burnett. Correct. So, uh, could you give us a sense of the scale of the problem that we're talking about here, not just in the Philippines, but regionally and uh, globally? Or let's just stick to the regional perspective because that is overwhelming enough. Could you please give us a, a big picture about that? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, thank you for the invitation to come today. Uh, we have sent you a brief that we've done on um, forced uh, trafficking for forced criminality in Southeast Asia, uh, which was done in March of 2023. And largely what we're seeing is that there's a, a very similar um, type of, of means, acts, and exploitation that we see here today. Um, in this unfortunate case, um, but the the main areas, maybe you can go forward. Sorry, I didn't realize because I know that we don't have much time. Yes, thank you. This is what we're seeing across the region um, is that the act, the recruitment through social media, transportation is arranged and paid for by the employer. Tourist visa apps are used and paid for or or uh, um, secured by the employer with the promise of a longer term work visa. There is harboring. This is all under act and those three components are according to the uh, Palermo protocols, which I want used uses. So there are guarded compounds uh, that operate um, often in scamming centers. And then of course, transfer and receipt. So there is a change of hands in the process that goes from the recruiter to the smuggler to the trafficker and then to the employer uh, when you're talking about this cross-border. So that would be the act and that what we're seeing across uh, Southeast Asia and other parts of Asia is largely similar. The means, and this uh, goes into much of the discussion today because it involves deception and deception negates willingness or voluntariness because you can't be voluntary if you're lied to. So fraud and deception, deception in terms of promises of favorable work conditions, uh, high salaries, um, bonuses, which we are also seeing, free food and accommodation, uh, as well as different types of employment that range from customer service, data entry, marketing. They're really looking not just at unskilled labor, but also people with college educations. Remember that with COVID, there was innovation in business and technology as well as a driver for people that lost their jobs and uh, were lured by these types of promises uh, with access to social media again. Uh, in some instances, we saw abduction, uh, either through dr drugs or armed, um, armed groups. And then of course, coercion. Again, this is all under the means. So threats of violence, um, threats to be sold to another company, uh, as well as that actually being carried out. So as an example, um, violence, uh, as well as uh, uh, docs in pay, if not reaching a certain quota. 
uh, also captivity and confinement and restriction on communication, such as confiscating uh, mobile phones, monitoring their usage, et cetera. And, and then are there trends or patterns emerging about perpetrators, these traffickers? I would be hesitant to speak on behalf of law enforcement, but I'll use that as um, a platform to say that one of the challenges that we're seeing is actually a lack of intra and cross border coordination among law enforcement agencies simply to get a better understanding of the actors. Uh, what we do know is that when you have a large scale group of identified victims that often they are uh, criminal actors or organized criminal actors involved, which necessitates the role in coordination of law enforcement for cooperation, as well as vulnerability assessments of individuals to collate that information so we have a better idea, not just of the individual needs, but of the patterns, which goes into prevention, assistance, and response, which are the three different components. And therefore, moving forward, um, are there already strategic interventions that you propose in the region and that um, legislatures, law enforcement agencies, regulators here in the Philippines could support or could consider for our own implementation? So we look at what we call the four Ps, prevention, protection, prosecution, and partnerships. In terms of prosecution, particularly in large-scale cases, remember that victims or um, th that the they are still individuals, the large group of victims. So they have individual needs and rights, and we advocate for a victim-centered approach. Um, but also to remember that uh, they can be ten potential witnesses in a criminal proceeding and to ensure their safe uh, and voluntary participation within that prosecution. And then on the partnership side, which I alluded to, I would say uh, that the Philippines is a lead Sherpa in the ASEAN se senior officials meeting on transnational crime. Um, so that is, uh, they are in a good position to be pushing enhanced cooperation uh, with law enforcement, including on the uh, draft Bullhole 2.0 work plan and implementation of the latest ASEAN declaration on the use of technology for trafficking in persons. So those would be a couple concrete suggestions from our end. Thank you very much. And they're detailed in the brief that you sent the committee. I, I suppose. Um, those two later issues we can follow up with supplemental information. Please do. Thanks so much. Is it also, uh, do you find also that it's a pattern that uh, mainland Chinese online gambling groups eventually diversify uh, into scamming? Uh, we want to understand if what seems to be happening here in our country is also a regional trend. What we are seeing is that there is an increase uh, in online um, gambling, cryptocurrency, money laundering, uh, as well as uh, romance uh, uh, fraud, um, and that uh, many of the um, many of the opportunities that have been uh, um, presented to potential victims. Um, turn, out to, turn out to be these six scam centers, which diversify in terms of, I would say, the portfolio of the criminal activities, as well as the particular role that people have to play, whether they're accountants, marketers, online scammers, et cetera. So there does seem to be a trend across the region in terms of countries, in terms of actors, uh, but I would hesitate to get, uh, to, to get more into the law enforcement uh, it's all right, but this this is already very helpful. And in your work so far in the region, do you have a sense of the magnitude, the number of the victims? Are they 100,000? Are they approaching half a million? What's your sense about that? So we do have some of the statistics and the um, the documents that we provided to you uh, before this this. Uh, um, hearing today, I would be hesitant to put a number uh, on it because it is an underground activity. But if you look at the caseload that was just identified in Clark, um, over 1,000 victims, I, and you're talking about a regional trend already in multiple countries, uh, I would project that it's a fairly big caseload. So all the stakeholders around this table and other similar tables in the region acting together against trafficking, against crypto scamming, to rescue the victims, rehabilitate them, and then rehabilitate our national economies could really make a difference in quite a number of lives 
uh, and families here in the region. I would suppose. It would make a difference, and I would say that it would be very difficult to effectively combat this without that cooperation between different countries. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Burnett. Um, IOM has also echoed what uh, the IACAT has been has said also at the beginning of the hearing about really the need for this international, uh, intra-regional cooperation to defeat trafficking and scamming and to Yes, to, to restore dignity to the lives of our citizens uh, and our countries. So uh, thank you very much for being here. Salamat to IOM. So, um, dear colleague, yes, and Sherwin. Uh, maybe we have a minute, but please take it. You are one of the, you are the author of one of our resolutions. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to take this opportunity while uh, we're ready in this topic and uh, Again, I want to take the opportunity of uh, the presence of PAGCOR. I, I heard earlier, uh, this is just a follow-up on Senator Tolentino's um, uh, line of questioning earlier, that uh, in May 18, 2023, CGC Technologies, uh, uh, the license was revoked because of involvement in criminal activities. Is that correct, uh, Attorney? Yes, sir. So their license... Uh, was revoked. Yes, sir. Okay. And um, have you conducted an investigation uh, regarding their involvement to uh, these criminal activities? Actually, sir, uh, on May 8, 2023, we issued a show cause order um, to, the three, uh, to the two entities, to the CJC Technologies. And similar to what they explained to CDC, uh, they explained that they have an agreement with Colorful and Leap Group Company and that uh, they are saying that they do not have any control on the actions of these companies that are subleasing to them. But um, based on our rules, we do not also allow this kind of activity. And even if they are not, uh, they are not controlling the activities of Colorful and Leap Group Company, it is their responsibility and they should not have allowed those kinds of activities to be happening within their um, registered operating sites. Okay, you, you mentioned two, uh, two uh, entities you... Uh send show cost orders to two entities. Which are the two entities? What are those? We also issued a show cost order to Sun Valley Clark Hub Corporation. So Sun Valley Clark. But we know that the that CGC and Sun Valley is one and the same, correct? In terms of ownership. Yes, sir. So there's just one personality behind it. I mean, there's one uh, group of people behind it. Yes, Mr. Okay. Chair. And the the uh, argument there is uh, they don't have any control over the sub lessee. Yes, Mr. And what What's your finding? How, how did you, uh, uh, what is your analysis to that? And what exactly did they violate uh, in their contract? Actually, Mr. Chair, uh, they violated the exact uh, reason why we gave them a license. Which is? We gave them a license for the purpose of being a uh, service provider for online gaming. However, they engaged in activities beyond the uh, license, license or accreditation that we have given to their favor, sir. So the, the violation is going beyond their license? Yes, sir. In addition, sir, uh, last September 15, 2022, uh, the uh, PAGCOR, together with other government agencies, had an agreement with the POGO licensees that if they ever will be caught in uh, involved in criminal or illegal activities, they will be dealt with severely by fines and also cancellation of their license or accreditation. Okay. Two questions. Have you fined them? Yes, Mr. Chair. How much is the fine? The first fine is thirty thousand U.S. dollars, and the other one is fifty thousand U.S. dollars. We also forfeited their performance bond in the amount of fifty thousand U.S. dollars. Okay. And uh, what exactly is the criminal activity that you have found? We actually based our decision on the cases that have been filed by the uh, DOJ against the people who were caught inside the premises of CGC Technologies, which is the violation of the Expanded Anti-Human Trafficking Act in relation to cybercrime law of 2012. But what about CGC? Because we it was established that CGC 
has operational control of the building, has legal possession, tama, attorney, of the building. Uh, did you consider that as part of their violation? Because their argument is we don't have any control of the sub -lessee. But they have physical control over the premises. Yes, sir. That is primarily the reason why we canceled. Because despite the fact that Colorful and Leap Group are supposed to be not related to CGC, CGC is our accredited service provider. And it smeared the whole operations inside the Sun Valley Clark Hub Corporation. And also with regard to Sun Valley Hub Corporation, they should have known or they should have prevented these kinds of activities. Hence, we also... Uh, cancel the accreditation of the hub. Okay, and that's that's based on your findings. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, and will will these people allowed to operate again? Uh, CGC and uh, and Sun Valley. Definitely not, Mr. Chair. We are also launching, uh, we are also actually in coordination with the Bureau of Immigration and other enforcement agencies that we have to ensure that license uh, that licensees or accredited service providers who employed uh, these uh, rescued victims will no longer be allowed to be accepted in other companies. So we will release a memorandum to inform the other licensees and service provider that they should not be accepting these um, foreign nationals that were repatriated. Why? Because we will just be uh, parang paikot-ikot lang din po yung mangyayari kasi kumbaga sanay na po sila. So sila ay valued, magiging valued employee. Yeah, but, uh, so dapat for, po. For Sun Valley and CGC, will they be allowed to operate again? No, Mr. Chair. So they will never be allowed? They will never so be allowed. So the Clark uh, Pogo Hub will be perpetually inoperable? Yes, Mr. Chair. They will never be allowed to operate again? Yes, Mr. Chair. How about, uh, in our country, it's easy to set up new companies. We all know that. No, uh, We all know it's uh, you band one corporation, the owners will set up a new corporation and apply a uh, new license. How will you, how will you uh, take that into consideration? Uh, taking that into consideration, we will intensify our probity checking. Uh, we will make sure that uh, the companies that will be uh, requesting from us licenses or accreditations are not connected with any criminal or illegal activities, Mr. Chair. No, but how about the personalities? Well, because the, it's easy to set up a corporation. It will be you know, a different corporation uh, the owners can set up, the personalities can set up a different corporation. How do you treat those personalities? It's already, uh, you already mentioned, no? San Valley, CGC, they're banned for life. Uh, the, the operations in Clark, they're not going to be operating forever. No. How about the personalities? We all know it's easy to set up no? uh, corporations in our country. You go to SEC, uh, in one day, you get uh, a new corporation. How 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 will Agcor approach that scenario? What is the regulation to that? Yeah. yeah. What is the regulation to that? Sir, I believe that's what we are. Uh, we are. No, but what is your existing regulation? Be two, checking, Mr. Two Chair. personalities, not only corporations, huh? Yes, Mr. Two Chair. Two personalities, owners, shareholders, board of directors who are embroiled in human trafficking. Yes, Mr. Chair. Our probity checking uh, covers the corporation as well as the uh, personalities behind the corporation or the beneficial owners so that we will also be able to determine the involvement of these personalities in the, in the company using the veil of the uh, corporations. Okay, so what have uh, your probity check yielded to? Pardon, pardon Mr. What Chair. What is the result of your probity check? Uh, right now, sir, we are not yet. Uh, we don't have yet the uh, applicant that you're referring to, Mr. No, no, but you, you cancel the corporation, diba? Obviously, the personalities are still at large. Okay, will the okay will when the corp? I'll give you a scenario. If the person, if those personalities will set up another, another 
uh, service provider and another licensee, will you give them, uh, will you allow them and give them license to operate? For sure, Mr. Chair, they should be blacklisted and they should not be allowed to have another license or be given accreditation. So your regulation uh, specifies uh, blacklisting of personalities who are embroiled in criminal activities. Yes, sir. They are disqualified to be uh, given the privilege of holding a license. That's under what regulation? Can you specify to us for the record what regulation of PAGCORS uh, um, specifically blacklist personalities embroiled in uh, crimes? Because ang, 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 ang punto ko dito, established no, that si CGC San Valley embroiled in crime. Therefore, out na sila. You're now you're saying there's a regulation for blacklisting of personalities. I want to know what exact regulation uh, that deals with the blacklisting. Mr. Chair, we do not have the exact word of blacklisting. However, based on our regulation of probity checking, there should be a checking of the criminality, uh, criminal association, uh, financial stability, financial capability of the applicants. So if we found in there that the... Uh, that the beneficial owners or those connected with the new applicant is embroiled with the other companies or uh, or closed companies involved in criminal activities, then we will not, no longer or we will deny the application on the basis of their involvement with the uh, personalities. Who owns Sun Valley and CGC? Based, Based on PAC course records? It's Mr. Kevin Christopher Wong, Mr. Chair. For which one? For CGC Technologies and Sun Valley Clark. So it's one and the same. Yes. So if Mr. Wong will incorporate a new corporation, I'll give you a scenario, and applies for a uh, service contract, uh, uh, sorry, a service provider uh, uh, accreditation or a POGO licenses, will he be allowed? to be given a license to operate? Sir, for this one, uh, we will have to conduct our investigation, sir, with regard to the involvement of Mr. Wong. However, if based on the investigation and, uh, and that we found in there that he is embroiled in these activities, then we will no longer give him or give him the chance to hold the privilege of holding a license, Mr. Chair. Yes, yeah, no, yeah. Um, yeah, I, Mr. Madam Chair, thank. Sorry for uh, taking more than one minute. Um, but um, and then I'd like to give a minute also to yeah, Stan yeah, Grace, I'll, the author of our other resolution. I understand. There's thank a you, Stan no, There will be a next okay. hearing. Yes. Just submit to us, Pagor, that policy or regulation on blacklisting. Pagola, then again, Pagor is remiss in its job in terms of enforcement. Masyado tayong malambot eh. Human trafficking to eh. Control mo yung premises mo eh. Ikaw may ari ng kumpanya. Tapos pwede ka pang mag-apply at magnegosyo another service provider or POGO license because walang regulation ang PAGCOR to that effect. We, that's why we're here because we're addressing crimes related to POGO. Established na yan. I think there's no argument that crimes are related to POGO or or POGO generates crimes. That's established already. But our regulation is so weak that people can circumvent it and apply again. You know? there's, no, there's no disincentive for them to perform or act in accordance with the law. That's what I'm driving at. That's why we're asking for those documents because we're, personally, I'm seeing a lot of gaps. You know? And just submit to us all of those, submit to us all documents related to this case and the regulations related to this case. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Wynn. Uh, Senator Grace Poe is online and she's the author of one of the resolutions we are investigating. So, Sen. Grace, uh, you have the floor for your um, statement or manifestation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, siguro kaya ako ng file ng resolution na to, kasama na din ang ibang mga kasama natin dyan, eh kasi nga, merong 
merong pagdududa talaga ng trafficking dito. At para nakikita natin, maraming mga kababaihan rin ang apektado. We have the same advocacy, Senator Risa. Um, it just so happens that maraming iba-iba pang nagsangasanga ng mga problema dito. Listening to uh, the proceedings, I think it's clear that kung walang nagpapalusot, wala namang lulusot. So the problem is really in enforcement. It will not be this grave if our government officials were just really doing their job. So I, I would like to join Senator Gachalian with these observations uh, with regards to the many different government agencies. Um, Madam Chair, maybe we should also investigate the background of the ones that are heading these agencies, what are their track record? Diba? Kasi tingnan mo, uh, si Senator Sherwin, dun sa kanyang mga iba pang hearing, katulad dyan sa NGCP, diba? napagdiinan na ang ERC may, lak may malaking kinalaman din sa mga palusot na nangyayari sa NGCP. Hindi ba, uh, Senator Sherwin? yung mga chine-charge ng NGCP na mga projects na hindi pa naman nauumpisahan sino ang mga naging mga namuno ng ERC no mga panahon na yon yun ba merong kinalaman sa mga namumuno din ngayon sa ewan ko parang pareho din ba sa CDC uh, Senator Sherwin Yes, ma'am. We're uh, currently investigating the NGCP issue um, uh, and on ongoing with Senator okay, Risa, okay. actually. Oh, I, if I'm not mistaken, who were the past chairman of uh, the NGCP, uh, of the ERC? Well, the past, uh, the previous chairman is Chairman De Manadera. Exactly. Um, so, Mr. Chair, I'm just saying that uh, I, guess, uh, I guess this is all very timely. We need to focus also. Kasi ito, kunyari, uh, nahuli na natin ito. Pero pareho pa rin ang mga nagpapatakbo ng mga iba't ibang ahensya ng gobyerno na hindi natin, hindi natin sigurado ang kredibilidad. E paulit-ulit lang na mangyayari ito eh, di ba? So ngayon, these are the actors that we are concentrating on uh, in the private sector. But then, in the government sector, pare-pareho lang, nire-recycle lang, iba't ibang posisyon. Kung hindi dito magsasabog ng langkim, doon naman sa kabila. So, Mr. Chair, uh, there are a lot to be investigated here. But I, I, me, my point is also to investigate the government agencies and their heads that are in charge uh, of these uh, different operations. So that's all my observation for now, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sen. Grace. We can uh, uh, follow up on those points you've raised in the next hearing. So, colleagues, the uh, here, Madam Chair, uh, who is uh, this is yes. President CEO Devanadera. We are wrapping up uh, yes. before we suspend. Oh uh, well, since my name was mentioned and uh, somehow alluded to, I submit myself to the investigation of this committee on every aspect, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much also, uh, President CEO de Vanadera. Thank, so, thank you, sir, uh, Madam uh, Yes, and Grace. From uh, Ms. de Vanadera. Thank you. And for others, not just her, but for mm -hmm. the others that are also involved in regulating this industry. Thank you. Thank you, Sen. Grace. So, uh, colleagues, the hearing today finally, definitively confirmed one thing. Pogos are used as a legal cover for scam hubs. Kinumpirma ito ng iyakat kanina at kitang-kita sa dokumento ng mga sub-blessies itong ni-raid sa Sun Valley compound sa Clark. The scam hub in Clark is operated by a company called Colorful and Leap Group, which is a sub of CGC Technologies, Inc., a pogo company licensed by the PADCOR. It's appalling that this fraudulent cryptocurrency corporation, which has trafficked thousands of foreign nationals into the country to work as scammers, has been operating under a legal pogo. 
ginagamit o nagpapagamit ang mga pogo para manloko ng mga inosenteng tao. At gaya ng tinatanong ng mga colleagues ko, ano ang ginagawa ng PAGCOR? Hindi naman pwede na pag nag na sila, hindi na nila babantayan. PAGCOR as a regulator of pogos should be actively looking into the companies that they allow to operate in the country. Otherwise, it is in effect aiding this growing and disturbing humanitarian crisis in our region. Hanggang ngayon, patuloy ang recruitment para sa mga pogo jobs kuno, pero malamang ay mga papunta sa isang scam operation. Friends, colleagues, the first concrete step we need to take is to ban pogos in the country. Napatotohanan na sa wakas that pogos provide that legal layer to these hubs and the operations of these hubs remain beyond regulatory scrutiny. If pogos are allowed to continue business as usual, the crypto scam and human trafficking operations will also grow at a frightening rate our government will never be able to overtake. Wala ni isang magandang bagay ang naibigay ang pogo sa bansa. Krimen lang ang dala, gaya din ang sinabi ni Sen. Sherwin. Ulit-ulit na natin itong sinasabi at sana naman sa bagong impormasyong ito, matauhan na ang ating gobyerno. Kick pogos out of the country now. And beyond cleaning our own backyard, we need, as IACAT, as IOM have said, a multilateral regional response to this humanitarian emergency. Let us now act on this. Reach out to our neighbors in the ASEAN before it's too late. Muli, gusto kong magpasalamat sa PNP ACG at sa IACAT sa puspusang pagtrabaho para sa pag at rescue sa pagsugpo nitong mga krimen sa ating bansa. Maraming salamat din. Terima kasi to Elias Jason for um, your presence uh, in order to help our investigation. Uh, marami pong salamat to all our resource persons for your insights. This hearing is suspended.